And number two, John Lynch. Guys, I've been having, getting a hard time because I haven't been on those shows jacked up and all that. <laughs> they said I got my own segment, five through one. Well, you didn't get five through one, but you got number two. Oh. It's <laughs> Rudy Johnson right there. We love him. The first half, that's 2A. Oh. And 2B right there is Chris Henry. So we leave it with Chris Henry getting jacked up. And our number one hit, Alex Smith. Ooh, gonna be getting hit by Ralph Brown. And I mean getting hit by Ralph Brown. And Alex Smith got jacked up. <laughs> That's a look behind the, the curtain. You get to see it. No, I wanted to see it. There's a look yeah. behind the curtain of the you Wizard of Oz. You see it. You paused it for a while. Pay no while. attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Good job, Tom, and a happy holiday. Happy holiday. John Lynch, how about that? I mean, we could have had a whole a series of John Lynch. Now, speaking of jacked up, I did it to you guys. Picks with the Eagles pick. You're on Dallas, huh? That adds to 15 and 2 overall. Tom, Steve, still, you're still playing for second with one to go, Mike. Thanks for participating. <laughs> Although you're leading on Sundays, yeah. Monday's right. another that's night. Right. 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 So, yeah. everything fair. So, <laughs> you guys are incredible. So, who is it tonight? The I'll Jets? I'll, I'll take the man genius. I'll take the man genius, the Jets. Think they'll play a smart game. What do you think, Mike? My, my Monday night picks have been bad. But when I tell you what, I, I do believe that the Dolphins will step in and spoil it for the Jets. You think the and I'm, I'm taking the Dolphins. <laughs> Taking the Dolphins. Yeah, the Dolphins at home. Let's yeah. go down to Steve, who's in Miami in the rain. It. Hey, it's raining, Steve. What do you think tonight? Uh, thank you. Well, I think Eric Mangini's put a lot of fingers in the dike in a year that he's been there, and this is the last one to make them a playoff team. Mm -hmm. I think they're ready to play that kind of football. I think the Jets will win tonight. All right, Steve, and uh, even though Miami's defense is outstanding, that Jet quick rhythm, quick shifting offense does well against that Miami defense. Jets 19 Dolphin 16. We will see you at halftime. Merry Christmas to everybody. Enjoy the game. Merry Christmas. Chris, welcome to Christmas night in Miami, a rainy one. But Jets fans, large and little, hope reality follows their Christmas morning wish. There's plenty of holiday cheer. And Jets fever. Hey, it's in the air this Christmas morning. The team nobody saw coming is in the thick of things down the home stretch here in the regular season. Pennington starts the drive deep in Jets territory. Pennington coming all the way back from shoulder surgery. Chad takes a snap and drops back. Yeah, he's really been an inspiration. He's got Coles open down the sideline. Coles makes the catch and he's off to the races. Looking for a win tonight against a rival, the Miami Dolphins. He's at the 50, the 40, the 30. Now they find themselves at 8 and 6. He's at the 5. This is a must win. And the crowd goes wild. Can you imagine the Jets in the playoffs? If they're in, there's no telling how far this team's going to go. He's got one man to beat. and dolphins we're running out of time kickoff is imminent i'm ready for some football are you
the playoffs for the fifth consecutive year, but it'll make their season if they can ruin the season of their arch rival, the New York Jets. Good evening, everyone. Mike Tirico, and we all wish you a very Merry Christmas. There's no place like home for the holidays, so we thank you for the great honor of having us into your homes on this special night. Talk about Christmas wishes coming true. Here are the Jets. They won four games last year. They go out and hire the youngest coach in the National Football League. Their quarterback's coming off his second rotator cuff surgery. Things don't look good, right? Well, here are the Jets. If they win tonight in Miami and can win at home Sunday against Oakland, the worst team in the AFC, the Jets will have a surprising playoff berth. Merry Christmas to and from Tony Kornheiser and Joe Theismann. Merry Christmas, Michael, everybody. Well, and let's talk about the good stories, the feel-good stories on Christmas night. You have Carson Palmer at the Bengals coming back from injury. Drew Brees in New Orleans and Chad Pennington just as significant, just as important with the Jets. And Mike, you made the point. Two surgeries, not one on his shoulder. Chad Pennington really has been the driving force behind the Jets. He's been able to do the things that he has done in the past. Complete passes. He's at 65% completion percentage. Those are the things that he was able to do. As a matter of fact, last week against the Minnesota Vikings, threw for a career high, 339 yards. I feel like he's going to have to do the same thing tonight, throwing the football for the Jets to win, Mike. The challenge tonight, a good defense and a great defensive player in Jason Taylor of the Dolphins. I'm probably a defense of the year candidate. Jason Taylor is the kind of a guy who thrives now in the 3-4 defense of Dom Capers. He can rush the passer. Evidence is 12 and a half sacks. He can force fumbles. Nine of them and the two interceptions that he does have are for touchdowns versatility is the thing that this defense has given Jason and Tony's one of the best stories or a couple of best stories tonight are the guys on the sidelines that's right Mike everybody knows Nick Saban he won the national championship at LSU signed a big contract with the Dolphins as a big offer now from Alabama but who is this baby face kid man genie who might win coach of the year well after he graduated from Wesleyan he went to Australia to become an investment banker and started coaching American football there. Loved it so much he made a contact at the Cleveland Browns and said he would do anything. Cleveland offered him a job as a ball boy and his mom said, are you kidding? You're 23 years old. Mangini took it, worked 18 hours a day. Somebody in the organization noticed and got him a spot in the PR department as an intern. He worked 18 hours a day. After midnight, Mangini could be found Xeroxing stats at the copying machine across from the coach's office. That's where the coach, Bill Belichick, found him. Struck up a conversation, discovered they were both Wesleyan grads, talked football. Belichick went to PR and asked about the kid. Was told his internship was up the next day. Belichick said, maybe I can find something for him. Gave Mangini the lowest possible coaching job and told him to break down film for the real coaches. Mangini worked 18 hours a day, and the rest, as they say, is history. It is quite a story, and there are methods to the Mangini magic. Susie Cobra will tell us about that, and Michelle Tafoya about the rumor that won't go away with Nick Saban. Monday Night from Miami continues after this. Over five tons of towing capacity. 2,010 pounds of payload. It seems in thinking ahead, our engineers left nothing behind. Introducing the more comfortable, more powerful, more capable, all-new 2007 GMC Sierra. We examined everything and overlooked nothing, then backed it with the GM 100,000-mile warranty. That's professional grade. Tonight's telecast available on ESPN HD, presented by DLP, HD TV Technology. To the sideline, the very busy on Christmas Day, Michelle Tafoya covering the Dolphins first. Susie Kalber on the Jets coach, Suze, who sets the tone for football by using another sport. That's right, Mike. Throughout the season, Eric Mangini used boxing to help motivate his team. Each week, he would pull out one of those great old fights that paralleled the theme of the week. Now, for Mangini, the connection represented a look back with his dad, who passed away when Eric was just 16. They used to watch Friday night fights together, so now boxing is a warm memory. Before the Jets beat Miami in week six, it was Hagler Hearns. The message? Hagler has to learn from adversity. The Jets had been shut out the week before. This week, Mangini showed the team Rocky Balboa on the flight out, a movie about the journey and a long shot with tremendous heart. Michelle, as Mangini told us, that sure fits. Ah, well, speaking of fit, Susie, rumors persist about Nick Saban becoming the next head coach at the University of Alabama. 
Now, Saban told us categorically he is here in Miami for now. But sources tell us that Saban remains at the top of the Crimson Tide's wish list. Now, Saban feels tremendous loyalty to Dolphins owner Wayne Huizenga, who brought him here to turn the franchise around. But he also acknowledged to us that he really misses teaching and influencing college players on the football field and off. So the story is, is that Alabama is expected to wait until the Dolphins season is over and until the college bowl season is over and make one last run at Saban. Mike, so this story just won't go away. And he hopes his team will not go away facing the Jets tonight. Michelle Skycamp presented by IBM will give us a special look at all the action tonight. It is a New York story. Win and win. And the Jets are in the postseason trying to get it done tonight in Miami. Special Christmas edition of Hank Williams. They kick off coming up next. Every Monday night, there's a battle to determine who has the keys to victory. Tonight, it could be you. Make your pick at keystovictory.com. 16 weeks, 16 trucks, 16 winners. GMC, we are professional grade. Once upon a time, there was this idea. One of those proverbial big ideas. An idea so big that it needed help making the leap between possibility and reality. This big idea, it's your idea. Now who's going to help you make it real? Who will win, New York or Miami? Less than 10 minutes to vote. Go to keystovictory.com and you may win an all-new 2007 GMC Sierra. 16 weeks, 16 trucks, 16 winners. GMC, we are professional grade. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Christmas night here in South Florida you see the rain on the aerial shot and that's part of the story here short and long term we'll get to that in a second but first the big line win tonight and win against the Raiders at the Meadowlands on Sunday and the Jets will be in the playoffs they control their own fate if they win either game if they lose tonight they're not eliminated win either of their last two games and then get that help in spots one two and three Bengals lose and Jaguar lose next week Bengals lose and Titans win or Broncos lose and Jaguars lose and the Jets will be in the playoffs. So we'll keep you updated on that throughout the night. Now this rain, if you're with us on Monday Night Countdown, Susie told you that it started raining heavily 90 minutes ago. I know this is a day that you weren't hanging around the TV as much, but a damaging line of storms swept from the really northwest corner of the state on through doing damage in Jacksonville and in the center of the state in Orlando and it's now hit here. Scattered thunderstorms are in the forecast throughout. There was a power hit in the stadium so the normal full complement of lights are not up at this time but after consultation they've determined that there are enough lights available to play the game. So Hank's in the Jumbotron and we are getting ready to go with one of the great NFL rivalries the Jets and the Dolphins. Here's what's going to happen. I mean, they, they got people out there. They got a lot of um, 
you know, little animals on treadmills trying to generate power. Yeah, they got working. them all working. You keep the candle power up, you'll be okay. It's working. But if any of those animals gets fatigued and passes out, that's it. We take another hit, and we just chat about whatever we want to chat about. As young as Eric Mangini is, maybe we can get him over there to run on it a little bit. I mean, just <laughs> what a phenomenal job he has done with the Jets. The big thing everybody talked about when we talked to their players was he's been so consistent. Whether we won, we got blown out, or, or either or, he's remained very, very consistent. I think that's very important for a head football coach. Stability there. Don't show the emotions of up and down with your guys. His Jets win the toss and will receive. So we'll see Jason Taylor, Zach Thomas, and the Dolphin defense on the field first. Chad Pennington's field position depends on the kickoff return from Justin Miller, the Pro Bowler. Off we go on Christmas night from Miami. Miller gets a block. will seem, and he's brought down at the 31-yard line by Jim Maxwell, the backup linebacker. So we mentioned Chad Pennington, the surgically repaired throwing shoulder a couple of times. Remember, he had led the Jets to a playoff win in 04, but only played in a couple of games in the 2005 season, starting three and then re-injuring it. His numbers, as always, what is it they say about Chad Pennington? He is a short, accurate passer, and that accuracy has led the Jets to this 8-6 spot and an opportunity for a playoff berth with two more wins. Again, no Cedric Houston for the Jets tonight. Inactive with the calf injury. Drive start at the 31. Three for Leon Washington. Offensive lineman Pete Kendall from Massachusetts introduces us to his Jets offensive mates. Up front tonight, we have two first-rounders. To my left, DeBrooke Shaw Ferguson. And to my right, Nick Mangold. Our backs and receivers are led by NFL Comeback Player of the Year candidate Chad Pennington and feature our two outstanding wide receivers, team MVP Lavernius Coles and the emerging Jericho Kotcher. Out of Boston College, the pride of Weymouth, Mass. That's where the accent's from. Opening gain of three. Brad Smith, the motion man. Pennington's first pass. Into traffic is nearly intercepted on the deflection. I was going to say when I heard him speak that he was either from Atlanta, Georgia, or Boston, right? And I thought it was Boston. <laughs> This is a matchup we'll be looking at all night. The Brickshaw Ferguson against Jason Taylor gets pushed back, does a nice job of staying in front. And the other thing you saw was the way the ball came out for Chad Pennington. How will it affect the moisture, the, the wet, the rain? How will it affect a guy who has put a lot of wear and tear on his arm through the course of an entire season? Heavy rain. This is not as heavy as it was raining 90 minutes ago. Third and seven. Tight end Chris Baker, the motion man. Pennington threw that one away because it was covered. It was sniffed out by the Miami defense right away, and the Jets are three and out out of the gate. Haven't I heard you say before a number of times that rain has no effect on a passer because it makes the football tackier and you can throw it? Depends on the individual. For example, Troy Aikman hated rain because he had the ball go all the way to his palm. Myself, it never bothered me because I gripped it with my fingers. The six foot five Aussie Ben Graham with a very solid kicker this year did knock it away for the Jets. Wes Welker back, booming 55 yard kick. Welker from the 11. Always gets as much as he can out of a return to the 26 yard line, a return of 15 as he's brought down by Brad Castle of the Jets. Joey Harrington, formerly with the Detroit Lions, third overall pick in 2002. Acquired via trade to be the insurance policy for Dante Culpepper. And when Culpepper started four games and his knee just wasn't giving him enough to get out of the way of the rush, they turned to Harrington. Joey has played well at times, but his coming off was, quote, the worst game I've ever had in my entire football career that was at Buffalo last week. Sammy Morris is the back. And Morris will gain three yards to the 29. Here's Harrington to introduce us to the guys helping him on the Miami offense tonight. We're going to start with the offensive line, the guys who do the work and don't get the credit. At left tackle, we got Big Mac. At left guard is Kendall Jaycox. At center is Rex Hadnot and his long-lost brother at right tackle, Vernon Carey. At right guard is L.J. Shelton. Our skill position players are led by the silent assassin, Chris Chambers, and the fiery Randy McMichael. Missing his starting receiver, Marty Booker, 51 catches this year. Hurt his ankle in the loss at Buffalo last week. Harrington's first throw incomplete, intended for Randy McMichael, the tight end. For third down, here's Jonathan Vilma to introduce us to the New York 
defense. Starting with the D-line, we have our Orange Mound, Tennessee native, Dwayne Robertson, heading up the nose guard. We have our big bully leader in Sean Ellis at defensive end. Over at the linebackers, we have our up-and-coming star in Brian Thomas and our Maryland Turp, Eric Barton, right next to me. Back in the secondary, we have the West Coast wonder, Eric Coleman, and none other than Hollywood, Kerry Rhodes at safety. Some people felt that Rhodes had a Pro Bowl-type season. Four sacks, four picks, three forced fumbles. Third and seven. Five receivers for Harrington to choose from. Comes back to Sammy Morris, who got a block from Wes Welker and is very close to the first down. You all depend on the mark. They're going to be a little bit short. Well, you say they got it. First they're down. Gonna, they're going to make it by a little bit. <laughs> well, no, Joe, I was with I, you. I thought I'm, they were yeah, short when they put the ball down. I'm, I, you know, it depends where they put. Now, Joey Harrington does a nice job of looks to his left, staying in the pocket, moves his feet around, knows where everybody does, and then Sammy Morris winds up evidently picking up a first down. Spot was shaky. It's something you can challenge so early in the game. Probably one you'd hold on to. So from the 36, Harrington play action to the air. Pressured by Hobson. Throws and is held on to by Chris Chambers for a first down. Andre Dyson made the tackle. It's actually nice to see Harrington complete that pass and get a big game after what he went through in Detroit where it just sounded like a culture of losing that, that almost was going to scar him for life. He would, he would lose a game and try to point out to the writers in the city what they did well, and, and they would call them Joey Blue Skies. They didn't want to know what they did well. They, they, had, they had had losses for so long, they said, who's this kid from Oregon coming in here telling us it can be better? And it was a dreadful experience for him the whole three years, right? Four. Four years. Four years. Taking the Oaks track. Like 12 years. Third overall. Sammy Morris spins through, tackled by the safety Eric Coleman to the 44-yard line. And that's an organization that is uh, as bad as the Raiders right now. They're 23-72 and 72 since Matt Millen took over. But it's an organization that hasn't won a championship since 1957. And Harrington, as you said, earned the name Joey Blue Skies because he tried to change the culture. And one person couldn't do it, and he was the guy who got hurt from it. Justin Peel lined up as a fullback and the backup tight end moves to the wing. On second and five, Harrington rushed and sacked. Eric Barton and Rashad Washington clean it up, but Sean Ellis' pressure got it all started. That probably looks very familiar to Detroit fans from the Joey Harrington who played there who said that, you know, I, I, I felt I couldn't win. I felt like I was always fighting an uphill battle and I couldn't win. And he was worried when he got here and lost the first two games, I believe, when he came in. He said, I, I was just worried I was cursed no matter where I was. So at least in the last four or five games, as he's won some, he feels better about his life and actually likes being part of the Dolphins. 30 14, you see the whole Chiefs defense. Jet defense up there at the line. Now Eric Smith backs out. Bringing pressure on Harrington again. Hangs in there and a drop as it was in and out of the arms of Wes Welker. This was a team that was bothered by drops last week in Buffalo. They were not only bothered by drops last week, Mike, they had six, but they've dropped 32 on the year. That has, what has plagued Joey Harrington more than anything. Chris Chambers got a, his first catch in two weeks. Didn't have one last week. You can't keep not hanging on to the football and expect any offensive continuity. Left footer Donnie Jones to kick it away. Leon Washington checks where the five-yard line is and lets it bounce into the end zone. Touchback. Kick of 52, a net of 32. Zach Thomas in the Miami defense back on the field in this scoreless opening quarter. Want to get away? Now you can. With Southwest Airlines Internet Specials, you can fly to over 60 destinations nationwide for just $49 to $159. Purchased by January 22nd. You are now free to move about the country. Our engineers saw every square inch of the Sierra as an opportunity for another breakthrough.
Introducing the more comfortable, more powerful, and the most fuel-efficient all-new 2007 GMC Sierra. We examined everything and overlooked nothing to create our greatest pickup yet. That's professional grade. <gasps> How is it possible? Millions of tiny mirrors on something so small. I've never seen anything so colorful, so clear, so real. Have you? It's amazing. It's the mirrors. We have to show everyone. HDTV powered by DLP. See how millions of tiny mirrors make the picture amazing. Save up to $300 on select HDTVs powered by DLP today at Best Buy. Rose Bowl game presented by City, USC versus Michigan, New Year's Day on ABC. 82nd time that the Jets and Dolphins have played. The Jets lead the all time series and they've won for the last five, including an October 15 win at the Meadowlands, 20 to 17. That baby was only 6 3 at the half. Low scoring. We might see the same here tonight. Justin McCarrens is the third receiver in the game for the Jets. Drive start from the 20. And the quick toss to Jericho Cotchery gains about five and a half yards. Let's meet that Miami defense and Jason Taylor, the youngest guy up front, does the intros. All right, joining me on the defensive line are resident dinosaurs, the old men, Kevin Carter and Keith the Truck Trailer. And Mr. I swear I'm the sexiest man in the NFL, Bonnie Holiday. For linebackers, we got the man in the middle, Mr. Buddy Lee, you can't bust him, Zach Thomas. For DBs, we got Will Allen, who I swear loves Miami more than New York, and the playmaker himself, Jeremiah Bell. Bell moved into the starting lineup halfway through this season. Last play was technically a run as it was a backward pass. Cotchery gained seven, second and three. And Pennington throws it, tried to throw it away, but Channing Crowder got there. Maybe Jeff Scanina tipped it. One of the issues that the Dolphins have talked about, the problems that they might have, is the Jets do a lot of shifting. They work from a no huddle, which makes it difficult to identify when you're looking for receivers and backs as a defender. Then all of a sudden, after they do line up, they shift. And that was something Nick Saban told us. He said, our biggest problem is just going to be identifying where people should be which forces really defenses to play a lot of zone and less man to man it's safer country in motion third and three four receivers out there in and out for lavernius coles incomplete pass and the big stick will cause fourth down as Travaris tillman made the play what we've seen so far tonight Michael is that the ball is going to be difficult to hang on to whether you're throwing it running it or trying to catch it he's got that thing locked in and a nice job by Tillman just putting the shoulder on it nice job by Tillman who lost some playing time after his struggles in the game against Green Bay back in the dime package here another booming punch from Graham this one bounces out of bounds at the uh, 30 let's see with the market about the 39 yard line. So Miami in good field position. It's improving by the second. 49. Check that. I saw you driving a car the other day and it wasn't from Evergreen Kia. No, Doc. This is Dr. Andy interrupting myself for this important message. Evergreen Kia will meet and beat any advertised price or you get the car for free and one year of free gas. For example, you could take home a brand new Kia Rio that gets 38 miles to the gallon and a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty for a payment as low as $99 a month. Only at Evergreen Kia, 92nd and Western. Take good care of my Kia. And we'll take good care of you. Stop for everything. That's Cosmos Designer Direct, where high-end designer menswear is three for the price of one. Buy one suit for $3.99 and get two more free. Buy one suit for $5.99 and get two more free. Yes, buy one and get your choice of two more free. Plus shoes, shirts, leather, all three for the price of one. Visit our Chicago or Villa Park location Thursday through Sunday only. Or check us out on the web at 341suits.com. Meet Joe Perillo of Perillo BMW. Joe, what costs less? Four years maintenance on a new BMW or a bowl of potato chips? 
maintenance on a new BMW costs zero. That includes oil service, brake pad, and rotor replacement. Joe, put that back. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 41. GMC, we are professional grade. Miller Lite, for great taste, there's no debate. Miller Lite, always a good call. And Energizer E Squared Lithium, keep going. And tonight's aerial coverage from South Florida brought to you by Goodyear. We're about 15 miles away from that shot, just off of Dan Marino Boulevard, which is the street address for Dolphin Stadium. There was a 10-yard hold after the play, and finally the ball settled and marked for Miami at their own 33-yard line. If the Dolphins keep struggling yeah. with a the quarterback, they'll change it to Dan Marino Road. <laughs> He'll continue to get yoked from a boulevard, you know, like a lane they'll to a court. Keep down it. Yeah, no, no, keep making it, you know, a bigger thing. All my friends were envious that I got to spend Christmas in Miami till they saw the rain. <laughs> Warmest spot in the country, but warm rain. The rain, yeah, the rain changes everything. It's still warm. First down, Sammy Marsh almost dumped the toss on the ground, but he spins forward, and the whistle is blown. He did get six yards to the 37. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, Nick Saban told us before the game that Harrington wants to do so well that sometimes he puts too much pressure on himself. He said, we tell him you're being successful enough simply by not making mistakes. We want him to be himself, play with confidence, and affect others with positive energy and not let the external stuff get to him. And, and Harrington is said to have very positive energy among his teammates, Mike. And he did admit, Michelle, even with that positive approach to life that last week, the bad weather and the poor start in Buffalo couldn't get in a rhythm. And he said, it just got to me. Thus resulted in the awful game. Second and six, scrambling and throwing it to the bench. By the way, when we talk about an awful game, we can quantify that. He had a 0.0, .0 quarterback rating, and we spent about 12 hours in the Chicago game talking about Rex Grossman's 1.4. This makes that 1.4 look... Like a 9 for 7, good. Joe, right? No, he, he really did. A 5 for 17, two interceptions, 20 yards. Need I say more? <laughs> the zero points here, it's the 10th time in the last 10 years, and the first time since Eli Manning two years ago, that there was a 0, 0.0 rating in a game. But Joe Namath had two 0, 0.0 games, and so did Warren Moon. It happens to the best of them. Ronnie Brown, first action in four games. He is stopped by Jonathan Vilma, and it will be fourth down. Brown, the second overall pick out of Auburn two years ago, broke his hand Thanksgiving against Detroit. This is his first action back, but Vilma shuts him down. Just for the record, Theismann never had a 0, 0.0, which we like to call a Blutarski from Animal House, and that, he never had that, That's right? correct. <laughs> that is correct. Probably the only accolade that I deserve. <laughs> Jones to kick again. Fair catch made by Leon Washington. The kick was 46 with no return. So, slow start for both offenses. See if Chad Pennington can find that short passing game and get the Jets moving. We spent over 30,000 engineering hours completely redesigning the new Sierra from the inside out. Introducing the more comfortable, more powerful, and the most fuel efficient all new 2007 GMC Sierra. We examined everything and overlooked nothing. That's professional grade. Chad Johnson. I like it. Mm -hmm. But can I get a puff of smoke with that? We can do smoke. That was good. That was good. 
Well, this is our work family. Uh, the entire Monday Night Football team will be saying Merry Christmas to many of them tonight. Operations, engineering, and video. Uh, guys like Rick Abbott, Steve Carter, Joe Caracone, Clyde Taylor, Eddie Acuno, Matt Quag, Pat, Linus, and Mark, Jeff, Bruce, Lucas, Leo, the Eagle, Tommy in there, Albert, Bruce, Ricky, Tony, Bob, and all the guys who drive the trucks and get all the equipment from city to city like Seattle and Jacksonville their home? names don't mean anything to you at home but they mean so much to us and they're away from their families on this Christmas night as well so you're gonna see some of the people on our team tonight and hear some names that uh, just help bring Monday Night Football into your living room every Monday night and our thanks to our entire crew and we'll be like sharing some of that during the night like the Mouseketeers of old you're rattling off those names Mike that was very nice very sweet it's our family. We're glad to be with them here on this Christmas night. First and 10 from the 17, and Kevin Barlow is the back. Barlow takes it to the 23. No Cedric Houston, so you have Washington and Barlow trying to help Chad Pennington. Fractured his wrist against the Giants three years ago. That started the injury woes for a guy who was healthy through his high school and college days at Marshall. The first torn rotator cuff there against Buffalo, and then comes back after that surgery, and in 2005, the next torn rotator cuff. So twice that shoulder was surgically repaired. Carry for Barlow gets a yard shy of the first down line. It was so bad that one of his teammates last year, you know, requesting anonymity, said he's like an egg back there. His teammates love him, but they had, Joe, they had no faith in his ability to come back from all of these things. They thought at any given time he could get crushed. To be honest, I, I, none of us did. I'll put myself in that category. But tonight, making his 15th start of the season. Way to go. The most starts in one season in his career. Crowd loud, third in a yard. Throwing fourth and connecting with Pottery. First down to the 32. Here's Susie. Well, when I asked Chad how he's handled the adversity in his career, he said with a smile, first thing you do is welcome it. If you try to run from it, you'll never be successful. you got to buckle down and work. He insists he's used it as inspiration instead of hitting himself with why me. He said, why not me? And it's really helped his perspective, trying to enjoy it more. And guys, he's still the detailed perfectionist, but he's not the, the little things thrown for a loop. Yeah, that, that one line kind of summarizes it, Susie. He said, I don't let things bother me as much. So the slow start didn't get under his skin tonight. Barlow, just shy of the 35, Zach Thomas made the tackle. He's getting back to Pennington for a second. There was a scare this year in the Houston game. He went down. Mario Williams had fallen on him. He was on the ground groaning, and people's hearts stopped in New York. And it turned out he'd just gotten the wind knocked out of him. And as he got up, he pumped his hands, got the crowd really excited, got a huge ovation. Because they like him. They see him as a Rocky figure that he's been down and down and down and keeps trying to get up and has gotten up this year. Leon Washington, the lone back. Two tight ends. They run to the right. And Washington, the rookie out of Florida State, gets to the 39-yard line. So no Cedric Houston with the calf injury, and uh, running back by committee for the year continues. It's been Houston and Barlow and this kid, Washington, who wrapped up his Florida State career in this stadium in the Orange Bowl last year playing Penn State. He's averaged 4.4 per carry. It's pretty good when you think the rest of the Jets have only averaged about 3.2. He's been one of their most productive running backs this season. So there's the game. The Jets with the window dressing. They move. Dolphins defense adjusts accordingly. Third and three. Five receivers. Pennington gets the first down. Just shot by a midfield. A run of 11. Just not the type of thing you expect to see from Chad Pennington. He's a short drop guy, and defenders have a tough time up front getting to him. Good job by the offensive line, just staying with people and giving them a lane. As headsy a quarterback as you're going to find in the league, does a nice job of keeping two hands on the ball. And this is one of the things that he and Brian Schottenheimer, their offensive coordinator, worked on as he rehabilitated himself and looked at his game. B.J. Askew, the fullback, was in motion. Erased by Jason Taylor. He's been making those kind of plays all year. Loss of four. That was like something happened and the earth swallowed up that runner. It was like you fell into a hole. Look at this. 
Boom, he's covered up, gone. Now, the difference there is we see Jason Taylor play with his hand on the ground. If you're an offensive tackle, you treat him as a defensive lineman. That time, he was in a two-point stance. And DeBrickshaw Ferguson wasn't sure whether the back had him or he had him. Therefore, the running back winds up with him on top of him. <laughs> that's right. Whenever there's hesitation up front, usually that's the outcome. The other rookie offensive lineman, Nick Mangold, snaps it to Pennington. Second and 14, short toss is caught for a gain of five by Cole. Just amazes me how much success Chad Pennington can have throwing the football under 10 yards. It, I mean, this. I mean, he had 65% completion. You'd think somebody would just either stand guys at the line of scrimmage or bump the wide receivers and not let them off. And when they do, they take that one deep shot a quarter, and they have burned teams like they burned the Dolphins in the first meeting in the third quarter with a long touchdown. Third and eight, shovel pass. Washington with room to run. Leon Washington to the 20-yard line pickup of 29 first down New York the guys five foot eight when he gets into the mix behind the offensive line no, there isn't a defender him. that can see him no, can it see. is such an advantage as he comes under Chad does a nice job moving right there's the pitch good job by the line now the guys get downfield very instinctive runner wonderful move he put on right there on Ronaldo Hill so you want to make a case for guys five foot three to five foot seven to be pro athletes why Just not take a shovel pass no one can see you. Calvin Murphy's why not he only looked that short he was 5'10 yeah he looked short in the game of basketball right? this guy's 5'8 that's Brian, the tight end, was the fullback as Barlow ran it to the right side for a yard into the arms of Kevin Carter. You heard Jason Taylor, guys, in the starting lineups talk about the dinosaurs up front. Taylor's 32, Vonnie Holiday's 31, Carter's 33, and then Keith Trailer is 37. They got some old guys, but guys who can still play on that front four. What do you, what do, you do with that if, if they're still good? I mean, you, everybody says they're old, they're old, they're old, but they're the most effective part of the defense. Yeah. So you just can't dump them, right? No, absolutely. You play them for experience sake. You can do a lot more things with veterans than you can a young group of guys. They're old and good. Plug and play. Get rid of them. Plug and play. They play 11 of this drive with the play clock at 2. Pennington gets it to Washington. Was patient enough to get to the block and gets to the 16-yard line. Pete Kendall, the veteran guard, was getting out there, and Washington needs to get a break. What you can do when you have a defensive line like the Miami Dolphins and they have such seniority and such age is you can run them sideline to sideline and get them tired. That's something you can do that young guys will be able to do in the course of a game is stay up with it. Older guys are going to wear you out. This is third and five, and the Jets are going to go with four wide receivers. They've been Brad Smith, the former quarterback at Missouri, and Justin McCarrens the former starting wide receiver into the game. Cole's motion helps Pennington tell what the defense is going to do. Over the top, incomplete. Jets look for the flag and don't get it as the coverage comes with Jeremiah Bell back there. Fourth down. We talk about advantages and disadvantages of being under the center and taking the snap or being in the shotgun. If Chad Pennington was under the center, probably would have got the ball up quicker down the field. But you see, he bobbles it a little bit, winds up at nine yards. The throw winds up late. And, and it's not his fault. It's the mechanics of the way that particular snap worked. Bobbled it a little bit. Receivers quick up the field in a very limited area. Second round pick two years ago, Mike Nugent. From 34 yards, he's hit his last 13 field goals. But punter Graham botched the snap like he did at Minnesota last week. Graham comes from Australia, played Australian rules football, not a quarterback. He's learning how to hold, and that's the second straight week that he has blown a snap. When will a coach listen to me and let a backup quarterback do the holding because they handle the ball? What next? Tiki Barber and the Giants put it all on the line when they head to Washington to take on the Redskins. It's the season finale when the Giants battle the Redskins on NFL Net. Two out of every three Pontiacs sold have 200 horsepower or more. Two out of three get 30 highway miles per gallon or better. They all come with the best coverage in America. 
And this holiday season, get into a new 2007 G6 sedan starting at $17,210 after available cash back. Plus, it's your last chance to get the best factory-to-dealer incentives of the year during the final days of the Pontiac Red Tag event, but only until January 2nd. It's all about the POW. It's not about the steez. Or the stomp. Or shredding the gnar. Or even the snow bunnies. Nope. It's all about the pure schwank of cutting the pow pow on a bluebird Colorado day. Well, maybe it's a little about the bunnies. Double dose of college basketball on ESPN2 Thursday night. Tyler Hansborough in North Carolina takes on Rutgers. And the big one is Bob Knight going for 880. Trying to break the Dean Smith Division I men's all-time win record as Texas Tech takes on UNLV. That's college basketball ESPN2 Thursday night. Unbelievable, huh, Mike? Oh. 880 wins. On that uh, field goal box by the Jets, Andre Goodman, the cornerback for the Dolphins, was injured. He walked off. Uh, under his own power but may have been hurt on the shoulder a short carry for Ronnie Brown there you know here comes the snap now it's perfect and there's the wetness of the ball and it goes right through and hits him in the head now ask the Cincinnati Bengals how important fielding an extra point is or a field goal I mean the kicking game determines so many outcomes I just it boggles my mind that they don't let quarterbacks hold the guys that actually handle the ball and have done it before Especially somebody that comes spoken as a holder. Yes, for years. Here's a holder. Final play of this opening quarter. Brown. He is a difference maker in this Miami offense. They just look so much different when the number two overall pick of the 05 draft carries it. He gets a first down, and we go to the second quarter on a rainy Christmas night in Miami. No score. Giving the new Sierra more power doesn't make it professional grade. Giving it more power while making it more fuel efficient does. Introducing the all new 2007 GMC Sierra. The only pickup that offers more than 300 horsepower and over 20 EPA estimated highway miles per gallon. That's professional grade. Extreme power of Energizer E squared lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. This family comes before everything else before your wife and your children and your mother and your father. Once you enter this family, there's no getting out. The 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper add up to so much taste. 23 is always on the tip of your tongue. And so, at the end of the 23rd quarter, it's all tied up. 23-23. X is the square root of Y. True or false? Karen. 23? Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors and one mind-blowing taste, there's more to it. Bring home the best from ESPN Home Entertainment. Relive the year's greatest sports moments on SportsCenter Year in Review. And four more DVDs with compelling stories. Own these one-of-a-kind titles. Available now exclusively at Walmart. The stadium that will host Super Bowl 41 in 41 days. Hosting the 
season finale of the 37th season of Monday Night Football here on this Christmas night. Mike Tirico, Tony Kornheiser, Joe Theismann, Michelle Tafoya, Susie Calber wishing you a Merry Christmas from Miami. Did you know that on your own that it was 41 days away from 41? Did someone he tell you? Because that's great. No, I, I had to count. I did have to count. Uh, I had to use the kids' hands and toes, too. Very good. You know everything. The quarter begins with a run by Ronnie Brown, who gets another first down. That's back-to-back -back carries with a first down for Brown, who came out of Auburn, and nobody was sure. Could he be the guy to carry all the load because of Cadillac Williams sharing time with him? Had a good year last year, a good year this year up until the injury. Not sure if he is going to be the guy. I mean, Ricky Williams probably will be welcome back to the Dolphins if he is reinstated. Ronnie Brown broke his left hand. He carries the ball in his left hand. There's bad weather. That's something to keep an eye on as the game goes on. Play action. Harrington taking a shot down the field for Chris Chambers. Through his arms and incomplete. It was Andre Dyson on cover on the corner for the Jets. Well, we've seen two things involving Chris Chambers in the Miami Dolphins that didn't happen last week. First of all, he caught a pass. Secondly, they're going down the field to him, and that one goes right through his hands. He's not the fastest guy, sort of sneaky fast, incredible moves, and that one he should have had. And we've seen two so far for Joey Harrington that have been dropped. That's why you always have to be very careful when you beat up a quarterback for a poor game. That will never show in the stats as a, anything but a miss by the QB. But he put it in a perfect spot. Brown again. Nine yards. Yards coming in big chunks. Hilma and Coleman make the tackle. And Joe, you mentioned Ricky Williams, and Nick Saban has that in his mind. Will Williams come back after the suspension, the year up in Canada playing with Toronto? When he's been here, this Dolphins team has won more and run it effectively. Without him, they are 10 games under 500 and run for 36 less yards per game. Now, there's a lot of unwritten there. It's all the headaches that come with his dependability and those issues as well. And that was the word that Nick used, Mike. Is he dependable enough to be a part of this football team? Brown is run for 12, 11, and 9. So they go play action on third and one. It was an open deep. And Harrington just has to throw it away. And the Jets are looking for that should intentional, be intentional grounding, grounding, and they get it. He was in the pocket. There was no receiver in the area. And despite Joey's pro protestation, this is going to back him up. Joey's going to wind up with a 15-yard intentional grounding. Number three. 10-yard penalty. Down counts. It will be fourth down. Understand that if the quarterback is in the tackle box, which means where the tackles are lined up, and he's directly behind the center here, so he is, you have to be able to throw the ball where someone is. That time he threw it away. Now, How is he, he complaining on that? Unsportsmanlike, number 66 of the offense, 15 yards. That's Rex Haddock, the center. You know, that's, that comes from your quarterback griping. Because the center can't tell whether it's in, uh, whether it's intentional grounding or not. But if he's going to go after an official because Joey was all upset, that's that's 30 yards on the quarterback. And, and that, you know, it's 25 on that, the 10 on the, uh, on the grounding and the and sportsmanlike. And in a field position game where you're going to pin the Jets back inside their 10, that's not a mistake you can afford to make. And look what you're doing. You're running the ball. You've got positive things going. Plus, plus it was clearly intentional ground. Yeah. There was nobody in a green jersey within 30 yards of where he threw the ball. So now a return opportunity for Leon Washington. Will he field it on the hop? No, he's going to let it die down here. At the 23-yard line. One of the Dolphins was injured as he was down there. Hey, covering the kick. Man, it's a tough break for Miami. Harrington pleading a case to no avail.
I'm Ed Rontaler. I'm 101 years old. This house was built in 1930. We've had a lot of trick-or-treaters, many happy Thanksgivings, many, many happy memories in this house. I wouldn't trade a single day here for anything. <laughs> Each year, mortgage insurance from Genworth Financial helps thousands of people start building their own futures today by getting into their own homes faster. Genworth Financial. Insurance for living. Solutions for life. Back on this rainy night in Miami, no score in the second. Let's go down to the sideline, Susie Culver. With Venus and Serena Williams, ladies, nobody thought that the Jets would still be in the playoff hunt. When people doubted you, what motivated you? Uh, just knowing that you have the talent and that just knowing that how much I love competing. And for me, that's really what motivated me. But, I mean, it's amazing that the Jets are still in here. But, of course, being from Miami, got to root for them a little bit. A lot, actually. <laughs> All right. Well, the Dolphins are playing for pride. So yeah. if you're on the court and there is no title at the end of a match, what motivates you? You know, you just got to keep fighting, you know. I mean, you just always – it always feels good to come out with that win. And, you know, we're Dolphins fans, so we're hoping that they come out with the big win tonight. Well, you've both been through a lot of injuries. Give us some perspective on – what these guys go through you know, with 10 guys out there pounding them you know what we don't know because <laughs> I you know it's not a contact sport and you know sometimes maybe you'll get hit with the ball and that does hurt but it's not like a 300 pound linebacker going after you with all yeah, of his we, heart we can't imagine that it's too scary for us <laughs> ladies I know the South Florida fans will look forward to seeing you at the Sony Erickson here at Kivas game thanks thank for joining you. thank you very much Thank you, Susie. Look forward to seeing the Williams sisters return as uh, the tennis season gets going again here on ESPN. Eddie Jackson of the Dolphins, you may have seen him go into break, wasn't touched by anybody and went down immediately on this punt coverage. Here he is, number 20, third-year man out of Arkansas, a terrific track performer, two-time All-American in the hurdles and the long jump and immediately grabs that left leg. So this guy who made it as an undrafted player with the Carolina Panthers a few years ago, now here in Miami, is helped off. He's a cornerback, mostly special teams. Andre Goodman was hurt on that uh, botched field goal attempt by the Jets. So the Dolphins have taken a couple of hits in Nick Saban's secondary. That's a position he still sits in the defensive meeting room for. He's an old DB coach when he got started in the NFL and still has his hands in that kitchen. Jets take over at their own 25. Scoreless here in the second. And Pennington hands to Washington. Leon Washington. 11 first down yards. Jeff Scudina made the tackle. Jets have done a real nice job spreading out this Miami defense. They're making the big guys take a little bit wider splits and allowing the little guy to run up inside. You love the little guys. I love the you little just keep guys. Mentioning I, I, I like little guys. It's all about heart and desire. It's because you're taller than little guys, so you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. First and ten for Pennington. Back to Washington. Channing Crowder had a shot, couldn't bring him down. And he squirts forward for a yard or so. Crowder, the second year man out of Florida, was taken in the third round last year. I remember his dad, Randy, played for the Dolphins in the mid 70s, the only Dolphin father son combination of all time. Other than Flipper, who had many children. Is that right? <laughs> I didn't get their, their Christmas card. How do you know they work for the Dolphins? <laughs> How do you know that? Seen one pool, you've seen them all. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Lump them right in. Pennington takes the play clock down on second and eight. Incomplete Travis Daniels who's in there for Andre Goodman with that physical bump, Joe, to throw off some of the timing. Well, that's what we're talking about. This offense gets rid of the ball so quick. Chad Pennington wants to get that out of his hands. If you jam those receivers under five yards with the inability to go down the field, it looks like, they're not going to have much of a passing game. The weather, the grip on the ball, the fact that you don't get it downfield doesn't make it very easy to operate. Plus, you see those numbers for Pennington who historically is one of the more accurate passers in the NFL. And we say historically, he's now over 1,500 attempts, the minimum for career passing numbers. 
Pennington throwing the out, incomplete. It hangs in the air a long time, and Ronaldo Hill can come make the hit on Lavernius Cole's fourth down. Can I say something terrible? It's going to sound awfully critical. My dog oh, throws right. the ball harder than him. Am I wrong on this, Joe? I mean, it just, it, 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 no. there's no particular zip on the ball. Chad Pennington has never had much zip on the ball, and it does hang a little bit, but sometimes that can be helped by the route of the receiver as well. If you get there too quick, you have to get it out of your hands and allow a defender to make a play. You should see my dog. He zips it. Rams punches 47. Here's Welker. Turns it up. And West out of Texas Tech returns it a dozen yards to the 28-yard line. Chad Pennington and the Jets offense slow to get started tonight. The Rose Bowl game. USC versus Michigan. New Year's Day on ABC. Hurry in for incredible savings throughout the store at Circuit City's spectacular sale and clearance. Right now, get up to 10% off TVs. Plus, all home theater surround sound systems, receivers, and speakers are on sale now. And it's a perfect time to save on everything you need for everything you got. All memory cards, digital frames, and camera bags are on sale. And you'll save 40 to 50% on camcorder batteries, camcorder blank media, and more. Only at Circuit City. values on your favorite Lexus vehicles. The Lexus, December to remember sales events. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by the Lexus December to remember sales event, now through January 2nd. IBM, what makes you special? Circuit City, for the hottest new technology, think Circuit City. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? Such a strong Cuban community down here in Miami. Christmas Eve to the Cubans, known as Noche Buena, translates to good night. Roasted pig is the traditional main dish marinated in mojo, special marinade. I went to one of those on Christmas Eve. Uh, Dan Lebetard's close family friends. Dan is a writer on ESPN and a writer for the Miami Herald. Of the traditional Cuban Christmas Eve with the roasted pig. And I held the pig's head up in my hands and took a picture. You won't fly, Which, but you held it. Let me just say head. this. It's not going to go over well with the rabbinical society in my neighborhood. But I held. <laughs> you know, I thought it was the right way to go in honor of the traditional Cuban. Was it good? Black beans and rice was great. I loved it. Learned how to play dominoes as well. <laughs> Joey Harrington, the Dolphins take over from the, the 26. Man. You saw Marcus Vick, Michael's brother, making his NFL debut here tonight. He's in the lineup. It goes through his hands. And let's see if this was really a backward pass. No, forward pass and incomplete. Incomplete forward pass. Second down after Sports Center 30 and 30 with Chris Berman. Boom. All right, Mike, and a Merry Christmas to you once again. Jeff Garcia, the Eagles rolling. They're in control now in the NFC East. They go into Dallas and blast the Cowboys 23 to 7. They've won four in a row. NBA, Dwayne Wade and Kobe Bryant hugging, but it was Wade who had the big hugs. He had 40 points. He beat Lakers 101 85. We will see you at halftime, Mike. Thank you, Chris. Second and 10 after the incomplete pass. Darian Barnes, the fullback in there, takes the block up the middle that allows. Sammy Morris to go forward for four yards. You talked about Philadelphia, Chris, and their playoff implications. Here's the story with the Jets tonight. Beat the Dolphins here. Beat the Raiders. Worst team in the AFC at home on Sunday, and they're in. Or either of those wins and the combination of a Cincinnati and Jacksonville loss, a Cincinnati loss, and a Tennessee win. Tennessee is playing New England. Or a Denver loss in that mix as well. Don't take Oakland lightly. Their offense is horrible. Their defense can make plays. Mm -hmm. the, the 2 yeah, Don't take them lightly. Don't take them at all. They might have one in them. 
Third and six, the Jets back out in coverage. Harrington has to come underneath to Sammy Morris, who is tied up by Andre Dyson. Kerry Rhodes cleans it up. It's three and out for Miami. Jets four first downs. Dolphins four first downs. Not exactly offensive juggernauts at the moment. Not exactly. Miami, four possessions, fourth punt. Donnie Jones kicks to Leon Washington again. 43-yard kick from the 24. Washington returns it for eight yards to the 32-yard line. David Bowen's down there for the tackle. You see Chad Pennington there. We've got another quarterback with us. Steve Young joins us up here in the booth after this. This holiday, there is a DVD that will take you by surprise. Which player college ball? I didn't play college ball. Inspired by a true story, Invincible, this season's perfect holiday gift. Own it on DVD and Blu-ray disc today. Are you looking for an amazing offer? Try Cosmo's three-for-one suit deal. Buy one suit and get two more free. That's right, buy one and get three. And you get impeccable quality, a designer attitude, and selection in the thousands with hundreds in your size. Cosmo's three-for-one. Possibly the best offer you'll get anywhere. Suits me. Visit our Chicago or Villa Park location Thursday through Sunday only. Or check us out on the web at threeforonesuits.com. Be careful where you get a head start on your New Year's resolutions. Some employees aren't always tuned in, but they are at Chicago Home Fitness. And now get 24 months interest-free financing on the Midwest's biggest selection of quality home exercise equipment, including more treadmills and ellipticals than anybody. 24 months interest-free. It's only for a limited time and only at Chicago Home Fitness, Chicago's most trusted source for exercise equipment. It's luxury for less now at RZA Cadillac Buick Hummer Saab in Tinley Park. Cadillac Buick Hummer Saab. All that luxury, all for less. Cadillac Buick Hummer Saab. $15,000 off MSRP. That's an outstanding inventory of Cadillac Buick Hummer Saab. With $15,000 off Cadillac Buick Hummer Saab. It's all the luxury and it's all for less. That's RZA Cadillac Buick Hummer and now Saab. Tinley Park. RZA's the only place to buy. Good to be joined in Miami by our Monday Night Countdown colleague, Steve Young. Merry Christmas, sir. You too, Michael. Well, you won a Super Bowl here. Can you get some points going in this game? Uh, yeah, you know what? You take two mediocre offenses and douse them in water, and it <laughs> kind of <laughs> tends to slow things down. And, boy, one team has all this to play for, and the, and the, and the Dolphins are headed home. It's a unique, I think, psychology, and, and, and we'll talk about it, a team that has nothing to play for. And then you add the rain. It's an, it's an interesting day. Certainly helps that the Jets... And Dolphins are longtime rivals, and some of those words going back and forth with Bonnie Holiday and Lavernius Coles of the Jets during this week. And New York runs it on first down with uh, Kevin Barlow, who only gets three yards. We mentioned Steve, Super Bowl 29, the monkey off the back game, I like to refer <laughs> this to. The 49 26 win over San Diego, 24 36, 325 yards as the 49ers won Super Bowl five. When you see this over and over, and we get close to Super Bowl time, what feelings does it bring back when you watch? Ah, it's awesome. I mean, you know, I, I liken it to the building off the back game, really, if you think about it. <laughs> but uh, it was a great day. It really preceded by the biggest game of my career, which was against the championship game against the Cowboys. Pennington changing the play, second and seven. Intelligent Miami fans help out and make more noise. Pennington swings it out over Jason to the, oh my goodness, what a hit by Michael Lehan out of Minnesota. Wow. Leon Washington hops right back up. Yeah, that's one of those things. No, I'm not hurt. And everybody else is selling right your line. This is just, this hangs them out to dry. That ball's hanging in the air. You know you've got, you know you've got the corners up and the safety's back. And you hang one out to a running back on the sideline. Jason Taylor makes it go a little wider, and you could just hear the pop. Liam, the uh, fourth-year man out of Minnesota, made it after a free agent tryout camp. Third and 11. And add some spice to this one. 
Pennington in trouble. How did that get through? And Coles takes a big shot, and he is down and injured. Zach Thomas with the big shot on the Jets receiver. They come in clusters. Big hits feed off of one another. Zach Thomas just absolutely levels Lavernius Coles. He goes up to try and make a catch. Oh, man. That's a right cross. You can see the whiplash. So Coles, who was shaken up on a big hit in the Vikings game last week, down again. They check on him and will step out. I wonder who it's for. Could be anyone. My favorite color. What a coincidence. I did ask for something shiny. It's that time of year again when you'll find exceptional values on your favorite Lexus vehicles. Well, I have some things to do inside. Me too. The Lexus. December to remember sales events. Jets linebacker Jonathan Vilma is famous for plugging holes. But even he can't help every hurricane-ravaged family put their homes and lives back together, all by himself. Maybe you can give him a hand. Help the NFL and United Way rebuild communities. Find out how at unitedway.org. It's a new comedy. Let's rob Mick Jagger. We're robbing Mick Jagger. Ooh, we're gonna rob Mick Jagger. We're gonna rob Mick Jagger. Enough. Are we here for singing or for robbing Mick Jagger? The Nights of Prosperity premieres Wednesday, January 3rd, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Well, Zach Thomas talking to Nick Saban about that uh, huge hit there as Miami made back-to-back -back big plays. The good news is Lavernius Coles getting up after he was down for most of our break and walking off the field under his own power. And Chad Pennington, who kind of hung his guy out and uh, set him up for that big shot, was waiting there the whole time until Coles was able to get up and come over to the bench. Did you see the look on Nick's face as Zach was explaining? I mean, was any could anybody have been more interested and delighted with the story he was hearing? It was the night of Christmas, and all through the house, we were rocking jets. Two huge hits. Look out. Came right at Ben Graham. Got it away and got away a big one. Welker fair catching all the way back at the 15-yard line. That punt was 52 yards. Two back-to-back -back shots. That one by Zach Thomas as the Miami defense makes a statement in this game. Come through, everything gonna stop. All right, stay with me, Chad. Touchdown, Chad Johnson. Here you go with one of these sizzling bacon action. Are you serious? If I did that in public, I'd find myself. When the elements of nature blend, they create green. A green that's refreshing. A green that's rich in protective antioxidants. And blended with citrus for a great taste. Lipton Green Tea. Now available in a new family size bottle. A convenient way to share the goodness. Lipton Tea can do that. Available now at Jewel. Two out of every three Pontiacs sold have 200 horsepower or more. Two out of three get 30 highway miles per gallon or better. They all come with the best coverage in America. And this holiday season, get into a new 2007 G6 sedan starting at 17210 after available cash back. Plus, it's your last chance to get the best factory to dealer incentives of the year during the final days of the Pontiac Red Tag event, but only until January 2nd. Oh, it's packed. Got really good oh, there's a spot. Nice work, buddy. Hang on. Oh, I can't get out. I got it. Get any new Dodge, like the all-new Nitro, equipped with a Sirius satellite radio, and you'll get a 12-month subscription to the best radio on radio. Whoops. Now get the all-new Dodge Nitro with Sirius satellite radio, starting around 20 grand. 
Our friends at the Tournament of Roses tell you it never rains on a Rose Bowl day in Pasadena. The granddaddy of them all, USC and Michigan. The Rose Bowl game presented by City on ABC, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, one week from today. And, of course, you're going to have a bowls galore on the ESPN family of networks between now and then. A terrific college football week gets going here tomorrow. Miami takes over from the 15, and the Jets respond with hits on Ronnie Brown, led by Eric Coleman and Jonathan Vilma. Of course, Joey Harrington is the focal point, is the quarterback. Who is going to be the guy to finally say, well, after Marino, this was the solidifying person for the Dolphins. Marino's second most wins in NFL history with Fiedler and Heward, Lucas, Brian Greasy, Feely, Rosenfels, Farrat, Culpepper, and Harrington. They, they've gone 60 and 50 altogether, so the list isn't too bad, but there hasn't been a guy to take the mantle and take the franchise forward. We'll talk to Steve Young about that here in a second. The 16, back to Brown. Ronnie gets about three yards to the 19. Sean Ellis made the tackle. How difficult are you? you filled Montana's shoes, obviously. How difficult is it for this franchise to find the guy to take them and solidify the position? It's all about that guy who's willing to step up and actually take a hold of the team, and no one has really done it. I think with Coach Saban, he's a very rigid guy, and I think that Joey Harrington actually is enjoying that rigidity in his life. He's answered that. He didn't feel like he had enough structure around him in Detroit. I think he's So I think that there's there's some hope there. Dante Culpepper's just floating around there. I have not heard anything that Dante's going to come back and, and take a grip on that on that job. Third and five from the 20. As Harrington with time, but nobody open, has to make something happen. There's nobody open, so he gets out of the tackle box and throws it to the bench. Fourth down, they'll kick it away. Let's ask this question of quarterbacks flanking me with what you saw of Dante Culpepper this year, Steve, Joe. Is he the guy to come in here and be what they thought he would be when they signed him? Good. Well, I think that he has not come in and taken control of it. He has come in and kind of floundered a little bit physically, emotionally. I see he's missing meetings. He's not really focused. And I think that it's about Dante taking control of his professional career and taking it by the by the throat essentially and saying I'm going to be a great foot quarterback again on this night when both quarterbacks have combined for eight for 23 in the wet conditions Washington takes a 38 yard punt on the run and Leon picked up a block and put it into Miami territory at the 47 yard line we have a penalty marker down looks like we have a holding flag here and Joe go ahead I, I I don't think you can make a decision on Dante Culpepper I had a chance to talk to him on Saturday and you know he's excited about the opportunity to come out and be healthy he wasn't healthy he didn't show what he's all about and the other thing is people had a misconception about him leaving Minnesota that it was all about well he wanted more money he just wanted to know if he had a chance he got the feeling that he wasn't going to be welcome up there wanted to come back and, and you know he took an unfair rap a little bit in Minnesota he had a problem with his knee Dr. Andrews went in fixed it in a little 10 minute uh, orth orthoscopic surgery. He's now going to work on range of motion. Feels like he'll start working out in March, but I don't believe you can place, make any evaluation of where Dante Culpepper but is. He's at never this been point. the same quarterback without Randy Moss, has he? But is it possible that that was the magic in a bottle for those two guys, and that without each no. other they go down? I think you could say that, Tony. But perceptionally, I think that's where he struggles, Joe. Right. Physically, we can talk about it nuts and bolts, but perceptionally, he needs to come out and make everyone believe that he means business and I he think needs, that's where he that's where he's struggling and he him. needs his mobility there was a holding penalty on the punt so it goes from the spot of the foul back to the 30 Jets take over erasing the good field position and the run for four with Barlow to the 34 yard line let me take it can I take advantage of the quarterbacks again Pennington almost got two different receivers decapitated in the last <laughs> series. Steve, do you think he throws the ball hard enough? Well, he's always been a softer thrower, but in the rain it's harder because you cannot throw the ball with your forefinger, which is what puts all the mustard on it. You have to spin it out to make sure that it doesn't come out crooked. And so that makes it even more tough for a guy like Chad Pennington to put something on the football. Second and six with Chris Baker, the tight end in motion. Play action. Jason Taylor comes through with the sack. 13 and a half on the year. A loss of nine. Versatility in the defense. Dom Caper's ability to move Jason Taylor around and put him up against different people has made a world of difference. There he is again. It just, you cannot absolutely cannot allow DeBrickshaw Ferguson to try and block him one-on-one. -on -one. That 
That's a fallacy in a game plan if you think that this kid can block Jason Taylor one on one. Taylor, Taylor one of the other day said he can ruin the game of Jason Taylor. Taylor, 106 career sacks, fifth time he sacked Pennington, more than any other defensive player has sacked Chad, third and 14. Coles still out of the lineup for the Jets. They'll run with Washington and get to the 28, and it's another three and out for the Jets. As David Bowens joins Taylor, the defensive front, to bring the punter back out. Steve, there comes a point in a game where you have momentum going your way, your defense has stepped up and made some plays. After this exchange, it's up to Miami's offense to do something, or else they're going to let this moment get away. Well, I agree, and you get into these situations, they, everyone's got their... You know, uh, you know, mythical the bus backed up, their car backed up, ready to go home. And, you know, get into halftime, it's like, well, I really don't want to get hurt. I don't want to go in the offseason hurt. I think that the, this is where uh, Coach Saban's going to, his kind of philosophy is going to, hey, look, we're going to batten down the hatches to go win this football game. It's open for us, and someone's got to step up and do that. And I think this series is a great opportunity offensively. Your defense has done what it's done all year. It's gone out, and it's made plays, and it's played very well and limited people to scores. Now it's time for the offense to do something. And, it, and I, I, you got to believe that for Joey Harrington, this is an opportunity, a tremendous opportunity to seize a job or at least make the, dif the decision difficult. This is the 12th possession tonight. We've had 10 punts, one botched field goal. Dolphins take over at their own 35. Brown. Been the best offensive player on the field tonight either way. Right at the first down line, a pickup of 10. Steve, you talked about the psychology when when one team really needs a game and the other is done for the year. Did I hear you correctly? Were you sort of suggesting before that the Dolphins would be in a much better position to win this game in the second half if they were close in the first half? No, I'd say just the opposite. Okay. I think it gets into the halftime and everyone says, oh my gosh, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to. It really does go through people's minds. I don't I want to start the offseason hurt. That's not the way that Coach Saban wants him to think about it, but that's just human nature. And I think that that's why if the game's tight, he's going to have to go into the whipping, uh, whip him in halftime to get him going. Quick count there, and Brown is able to get five to midfield. Jets tackle made by Brian Thomas. So here's the story. As we mentioned, this being Miami's sixth possession, and technically that missed field goal becomes a turnover on downs. That was the only scoring opportunity we've had tonight. We had a game a few weeks ago where we had 13 punts in the first half, I believe, which was a uh, halftime record, right, Mike? That's right, for this season. Yeah, Correct. for the season. Plenty of time. We're working on it. We're working Plenty of time. That was the Philadelphia game. Record-breaking night. We Philly won that game, and by the way, went on the road in the NFC East and won all three of those games, which people said was impossible. So much for that. Ronnie Brown, first down to the 43-yard line. I don't know what people you're talking about except for me. Oh, I, I said it everybody, a, a everybody thousand said it. times everybody said it. that late in the season they could not go into Division three times and win, and they did. Everybody, everybody yeah. said it, yeah. I think people underestimated Jeff Garcia. He was an all-pro quarterback in that offense, the same offense in San Francisco, and he has that offense again, and I think he's performed, not admirably, but all-pro type of football. You'd have to say the rust is off, too. Yeah, and he's directing his career. He's going to be one of the hottest commodities if he's, uh, you know, who, who, who needs a quarterback to trade. Ronnie Brown, 10th carry, has 58 yards, adds to it. Tony, guys, he's the difference maker in this offense. When they went up to Detroit on Thanksgiving, this offense was just moving easily, and then Brown went out, he got hurt, and the offense kind of got stagnant. We see a little bit of that stagnation over the last couple of games. He's back. They look like a little bit different unit. They had a, He had 127 yards in the first meeting, so it tells you that Ronnie Brown and the offensive line know how to block the Jets' front. Again, first action since he was injured in the second half of that Thanksgiving game. Miami gets to 100 yards. Jets only have 87. Sammy Mars. Loss of five. The tackle by Matt Chatham takes us to the two-minute warning in Miami. No score on this Christmas night. My credit card miles expired, but don't worry, Daddy's got a plan. Orlando, here we come! Is there meal service on this flight? Oh, yummy! Who wants some? Hang on! Oh, evil! <laughs> Whoa! Isn't this fun? We should have switched.
Thanks to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration or in caps and no blackout dates. <laughs> oh, that's different. What's in your wallet? It's that time of year again, when you'll find exceptional values on your favorite Lexus vehicles. The Lexus, December to Remember sales event. At the World Beer Cup, over 2,000 beers are judged from 540 breweries in 56 countries. And in 2006, one of those beers won gold for best American style light lager for the fourth time. In fact, Miller Lights won more awards at the World Beer Cup than any other light beer. For award-winning taste, there's no debate. Miller Lite, good call. On this Christmas night, we have the Lexus Halftime Show coming up for you. Chris Berman, the fastest three minutes, highlights of the Eagles-Cowboy game, and Jimmy Kimmel will play Santa and dole out NFL Christmas gifts, all coming up on the Lexus Halftime Show. Philadelphia beat Dallas by 16. The NBA on ABC Christmas game, Miami beat the Lakers by 16. Here, I don't know if we're going to total 16. Scoreless in the first half. There have only been two scoreless first halves of the NFL this season. We saw it on week two of Monday Night Football here in Florida. Pittsburgh, Jacksonville. No, the right. Jets were involved in the other one when they played Chicago. They were scoreless in the Meadowlands in the first half. That was the game Mangini came out onside, kicked to start the second half, recovered by the Bears, led to a field goal. Then Chicago got a touchdown and won 10 0. But, but if can't... we get two out of the three, do we get a plaque commemorating the season? <laughs> <laughs> you witnessed no scoring in the first first half at all twice <laughs> out of the timeout this is third and seven all right take a shot down the field here they come take your shot Harrington sees the pressure hangs it up for Chambers incomplete defended by David Barrett and it'll bring up fourth down good call you know I'm a big you know I'm a I'm a big proponent of getting a ball into the middle of the field in the rain so a receiver can make a play on the ball. A defender is usually on his back, has got a slippery feet. I don't like down the sidelines. Put the ball up in the middle and let your receiver go get it. I, I, you know, when I was in the rain, I always want to get the ball in the middle of the field. The routes have to be designed to go that way. That's the yeah. big thing. And you're, you guys threw the ball a lot. You didn't throw the ball up the sidelines a whole lot, though, did Not you? Not a ton. Not Not a ton. Only when they weren't looking. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie Jones to punt it, try to pin the Jets inside the 10. Touchback, here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, and yes, and I'm joined by Hall of Famer Don Shula, who's now the vice chairman of the board of directors of the M Miami Dolphins. I almost said Minnesota Dolphins, do you believe it? Don't do that. Yeah, I won't do that. You know, there's a lot of talk about the quarterback position of this team because since Dan Marino, there really hasn't been a successful one. If you were to advise Nick Saban and this crew how to approach that position now, what would you tell them? Well, they got Joey Harrington, and, and uh, Joey's shown some uh, flashes of knowing what to do with the football and making it happen. Uh, Culpepper, of course, was brought in, and he didn't seem to be ready to take the job, and now he's on injured reserve, so they got to wait to see what develops with Culpepper. But the quarterback position is so that's the most important position in any sport. I don't think anything is second. So hopefully they're going to come up with the answers here. More with Coach Shula? Okay. Uh, you know, the rumors about the University of Alabama coming after Coach Saban uh, continue Nonstop, and this is the same university, by the way, that released your son as its head coach, bought out the final four years of his contract. What are your feelings toward the Crimson Tide right now? They're bad. Can I say it on TV? <laughs> I mean, the people that make the decisions, I hope they evaluate the evaluators because things have not gone well in that program, and somebody's got to be responsible besides Mike. I feel bad for Mike because uh, a year ago he was 10 and 2 and they you know, won the Cotton Bowl. Then all of a sudden it's six and six. He can't coach, but uh, he's going to survive. He's a fine football coach, and I just hope that the University of Alabama starts thinking about what they do before they do it. About hiring away Nick Saban. What would you advise Nick? 
Well, Nick is working for the Miami Dolphins, and everything that I've heard him say is that he's committed to this job, and uh, I'm sure that he is. So, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to try to wait it out or what they're doing, but, uh, you know, Nick Saban says he wants to stay here. Here's the here's the rub, Coach Shula, is that a lot of coaches in Saban's position, including him, have said, I'm sticking around, I'm committed, this is what I'm doing. And a week later, you see them at another university or with a pro, another pro team. So how do you know when to believe your head guy? Well, I know that's happened in the past, but I, I think that coaches always want to keep the door open, certainly. But, you know, I believe that Nick was hired to do the job here. He has a lot of respect for Wayne Huizinga, the owner, the Miami Dolphins organization. I think they've got a pretty good team headed in the right direction. So, you know, hopefully he'll make the decision to live out his contract here and not worry about Alabama. Well, listen, you are gracious and kind to talk to us in the midst of this rainstorm. Uh, what a pleasure to have you, and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody. And to Coach Shula, one of the great people in the show. 328 wins, the all-time winningest coach in NFL history. 347 when he had the playoff wins. We'll talk about the Saban saga here momentarily. After the timeout, third and five. Here is Pennington, who is pressured up the middle, searching for space. He'll be stopped at the 26, and the Dolphins will stop the clock here and take a timeout with a minute nine with the opportunity to get the ball back in good field position. Let me just clean up what Michelle was talking about with the Alabama situation. To that end, Nick Saban, on four different occasions in the last three weeks, has come out and made comments about the Alabama continued knock on the door to see his interest and made his most emphatic statement at a press conference on Thursday when he said, I guess I have to say it, and I'm quoting him directly, I'm not going to be the Alabama coach. Saban's words at a press conference with the Miami media on Thursday. He has said that. He has vacillated prior to that a number of times, not made categorical denials. But this sounded like a categorical denial. The thing is, though, Mike, people in this area in South Florida, until Alabama names a coach who is not named Nick Saban, are going to be afraid that Nick Saban will leave here and take that job. I mean, just denying it isn't the same as Alabama naming another guy. Here is Ben Graham to punt it for the Jets, who have gone three and out three straight times. Wes Welker catches it after 49 yards of kick and gets down at the 29-yard line. So 56 seconds remaining, and the Dolphins working with a timeout. We've talked about this privately. Here is a guy, Nick Saban, who was very, very, he was an, a, a coordinator in the pros. Then he went to college, successful at Michigan State, left quickly, incredibly successful at LSU, won a national title, comes to the Dolphins, is seen as a savior, and now just two years later, the Alabama thing floats out. Why would it float out? Well, one reason would be that there'd be some sense that Nick Saban enjoys the college process, that he likes coaching young kids, and, and, and watching them grow, that, that he likes to do that. But the people here look at him as a great coach. This is not somebody they say is a college guy. They think he's a pro guy here, and they want him to stay. And again, prior to this latest denial, it was the sort of non-denial denial. I'm here, I want to be here, but I'm here now. Not I'm here forever. 56 seconds, two timeouts. Harrington starts his clock drill. A flag down, pass to Ronnie Brown. He gains six, and we'll check the marker. Of course, the University of Alabama did offer their head coaching job to Rich Rodriguez, who turned him down to stay at West hey, Virginia. On the offense. Two men moving, and both did not reset. Five yards, play first down. I think it's fair to say that Saban remains on the top of Alabama's list, which is within their right. And you would see by everything that's happened here, when the Dolphins season ends and the Bulls season ends, it's, it looks likely, if you read all the maps and what road they're heading to, Alabama's going to knock on his door, and it's going to be up to Nick Saban. Do you take it, or do you remain here and continue here? The, the problem is, he's very loyal to Wayne Huizenga, the owner of the Dolphins. Rumors continue to come up, as you see two Dolphin greats and Bob Greasy and Dan Marino. They, they continue to come up about the potential sale of this team. Huizenga's denied that. That rumor comes up like once a year down here, and it's always turned down. Brown on the screen, chased by Brian Thomas. Squirts forward to the 29, gets the penalty yardage back, 40 seconds, two timeouts, and Miami doesn't seem in a hurry to get this half. Well, just to close continue. that up, maybe, yeah. I think the Wayne Huizenga maybe selling, maybe not selling, is the one out that Nick Saban can hold on to, can say all the things he wants to about Alabama, but in the end, if there's a sale or a rumored sale, he can say, well, that's not what we bargained for, I can go. Harrington to Brown, slides to the 37-yard line. Let's see if anybody stops the clock, and Nick will here with 16 seconds left. I just think if Nick Saban leaves here after two years, 
Um, he's not the type of man to walk away from a project, and I think this is a project that he accepted. I disagree with everybody. I don't believe he's going to Alabama. He's going to be the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, and he's going to find either a quarterback or get this thing fixed and have an opportunity for this team to go on. The window here is closing because of the age on the defensive side and the fact that this franchise has 30 free agents. And, and I think if he walks away from here, he'd have to be looked at as a failure at this job. And I just don't see him as that type of a guy. Would you see it as a failure, Mike, as well? I mean, that, that, that's a harsh word, failure. He inherited a four-win team. They won nine last year. They'll be no better than a 500 team this year. And if he goes back to college, you would consider that his attempt to come to the pros and do something that's been done by Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switzer. When a college championship and a pro championship really ran out before he had a good chance to do it, and that would be in some terms a failure. I want Nick to stay. Third and two. Harrington throws to Mars, who is tackled. The ball comes out. It's free. I don't think it ever hit the ground. That's why it wasn't whistled. And it's there, recovered by the Dolphins, as this half comes to an end. Steve Young, thank you for joining us. Is going to be your colleagues back in the studio with the Lexus Halftime Show. Chris Berman and company. Fastest three minutes. Eagles Cowboy highlights. Jimmy Kimmel's NFL Christmas gifts. And our gift to you, Joe, Tony, Michelle, and Susie. We have seen two of the three scoreless first halves in the NFL this year on Monday Night Football. Miami gets the ball first in the third quarter. Here's Boomer. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you, Mike, as well. Thank you so much. A uh, rare home game for us on uh, Monday Night Football. As the song says, we'll be home for Christmas. Thanks for allowing us to come into your home on this special day. Merry Christmas, Joy and Noel, Feliz Navidad, and of course, Mele Kaliki Maka, as we say in the Hawaiian Islands. Earlier today in Dallas, Cowboys Eagles hoping to gift wrap the NFC East for themselves. It was a surprising game, surprisingly strong again for Brian Westbrook and the Eagles over the old mate Terrell Owens. Now with the Cowboys, of course, Jeff Garcia starting strong. Matt Schobel, 25 yards, 7 0. E A G L E S Eagles. Philadelphia with a goal line stand in the second quarter. Marion Barber stuff. Marion Barber stuff. And Bill Parcells gambles on fourth down to Marion Barber. Stop. Eagles stand tall lead 10-0 until Tony Romo buying time. Finds T.O. 14 yards, 10-7. But with eight seconds to go in the half, the cerebral Jeff Garcia. No timeouts. Get it to Greg Lewis. Get in field goal range and get out. One second to go. Akers field goal good. 13-7 Philly. Romo looking for T.O. down 16-7. Brian Dawkins again huge. And then the Eagles, who says they can't run it. 200 plus yards. Corral General Bockhofer. Clink, you idiot. Touchdown. Eagles win 23 7. Dallas shock. Everybody knows what I do. I mean, every team that I played on, I've been involved early and often. And when it's, it's hard to get in the flow when you're getting the ball here, ball there. And then late in the game, you know, they start throwing the ball to me late. By that time, it's. It's too late. It's been real exciting for this team to have come together like they're coming together and just playing all out from top to bottom. I mean, there's not a single guy who's not putting everything out there during the week of preparation and then following through come game day. Jeff Garcia, he just wins. The Eagles have won four in a row, three straight on the road in the division. Now they control their destiny towards winning the NFC East. They clinch a playoff for Dallas, and somebody might be 7-9 who'll get in in the NFC. Yikes. Meanwhile, NBA Christmas Day, Dwayne Wade, the ghost of Christmas past. He in the heat of beating the Lakers' last two Christmases. Wade again, the ghost. Sailing from Kobe Bryant. Wade had four steals. It was all Dwayne Wade. Here he uh, fakes out Kwame Brown. Stutter steps Kobe. Bang! Miami by 12. Fourth quarter, heat up nine. And Wade spins again. The float out. And in the end, the spin. Wade with 40 points. And the Heat beat the Lakers again, 101-85. Christmas where it was not wet, inside in Miami. Jason Taylor has made plenty of opponent all wet. Here he is sacking Chad Pennington. We have a scoreless first half in the rain in South Florida. Back in 60 seconds. This halftime show is presented by the Lexus December to Remember sales event, now through January 2nd.
I wonder who it's for. Could be anyone. My favorite color. What a coincidence. I did ask for something shiny. It's that time of year again when you'll find exceptional values on your favorite Lexus vehicles. Well, I have some things to do inside. Me too. The Lexus, December to remember sales event. Presented by City, USC versus Michigan. New Year's Day on ABC. The Rose Bowl lives here. Welcome back to the Lexus Halftime Show. Ho, 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 and a Christmas night version of the fastest three minutes. Last time, Patriots in Jacksonville, they won 24-21. It was their last Super Bowl win. Tom Brady, Patriots in Jacksonville again. Maurice Jones, Drew falls down. No Patriot touches him. Very unpatriot-like. 74 yards, the Jags with a score. But Tom Brady to Dave Thomas. Not Rick Moranis, but Dave Thomas. And then Jarvis Green, a sack. Rodney Harrison, as he had the late pick in the Super Bowl, he recovers. Pats win the AFCs. 24-21, no touchdowns. LaDainian Tomlinson, first time since week five. The man that used to hold the touchdown record, Sean Alexander, had two. Outgained LT. Seahawks going to upset the Chargers until final half minute. Phillip Rivers, Vincent Jackson. Chargers win nine in a row. They win it 20-17. to Meanwhile, the Ravens, Steve McNair. What a beautiful pass to Mark Clayton. Ben Roethlisberger sacked 14 times in two efforts against the Ravens. This sums up the Steelers inside the five. A fumble. Roethlisberger picked off by Landry. Bill Cowher's Steelers will not defend. The Ravens roll at 31-7. Ron Dane, first 100-yard game in five years. Houston looking to upset the Indianapolis Colts. Ron Dane was a great Dane. And when Chris Brown, 48 yards, good. Texans upset. The Colts were already division champ, 27-24. Bengals, Broncos in the snow. Mike Shanahan squad, seeing plenty of that in Denver this week. Jay Cutler to Tony Scheffler, but Carson Palmer to Chris Henry. Bengals making it a game. Broncos had a 99-yard drive, starting and finishing with, aptly named for Christmas weekend, Mike Bell. But Carson Palmer, T.J. Hushmanzada, 10-yard touchdown. And then, oh, but they can't tie it. Extra point snap is muffed. Broncos hold on to win 24-23. They control their destiny. Evil Knievel, no, it's Jeff Fisher. He's got a quarterback that rides like Evil Knievel. It's Vince Young throwing, and it's Vince Young whoop, running against the Buffalo Bills. But another young quarterback kept things going for the Bills, J.P. Lossman to Lee Evans. We got a ball game, one of the best games of the day. But Young, Brandon Jones, 29 yards, and then down two. He's done it before, Rob. My Baronis kicks a 30-yard field goal. The Titans are 8-7. They've won six in a row, winning 30-29. to Reggie Bush. And again, you think he'll beat the Giants in the corner? I think so. One-two punch on the ground. Reggie Bush, Deuce McAllister. The Saints pound Tiki and the Giants. Could be his last home game. The Giants never ran a play in the Saints offensive zone. Steven Jackson, he ran and caught for 100 yards. Rams are 7 or 8. They win it overtime against the Redskins. They stay alive. Hitting everybody in the NFC. Zach Thomas says hello to Lavernius Coles back in 30 seconds scoreless first half in Miami. time of year again when you'll find exceptional values on your favorite Lexus vehicles the Lexus December to remember sales event this halftime show is presented by the Lexus December to remember sales event now through January 2nd 
Perfect play is voted on by you, the fans in Buffalo. Vince Young is sorry. Now we're going to slow it down. 36 yards out. Time running out in the first half. Watch the second gear at the 10 yard line against the Bills. And whoop, he's into the end zone. The Titans have won six in a row. What a present for Tennessee fans. Well, you know what? It's never too late for gift giving, even as the holiday winds down. Just in case you didn't get anything for your favorite players this Christmas season, here's our own NFL Santa, Jimmy Kimmel. Thank you, Chris Berman Munster. The nickname is my holiday gift to you. I've been asked to give the men and women of the NFL some Christmas presents this year. Since there are no women, let's stick with the men. We'll start with Big Ben Roethlisberger. For him, a subscription to Easy Rider magazine. Read it, don't live it. These are for Michael Vick. This is mittens for the next time you think about flipping off a fan. You can flip anyone you like off with mittens. I'm flipping you off right now. Might be difficult to throw at first, but you'll save a lot of money in fines. This is for Ladanian Tomlinson. You know how it's hard to find those cute little personalized license plates for weird names? Well, here's what we did. We got two, Ladane and Ian, and combined them. Next up, what do we have here? Oh, this is for the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't know if they have DVD players in prison, but if so, we got you each the box set of Oz. For the uh, Manning brothers, let's see. This one is for Peyton. It says, Mom and Dad love me most. Also got Eli a shirt. It says, that's probably true. For Donovan McNabb, oh, he'll like this. This is T.O.'s new book. It's called, You Could Never Hate Me As Much As I Love Me. For T.O. himself, this is a good one. A space helmet. That way, the next time he thinks about saying something, no one can hear him. It also works as a spit shield. And finally, for Dallas Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo, nothing. Santa already gave him Jessica Simpson. That's enough for one year. Happy holidays, everyone. I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Now back to Terry, Howie, Chris, and JB. Uh-oh, well, it was a long night for Santa. We're all in this together alone, Jimmy. That's what I learned. Jets, Dolphins alone on offense thus far. Scoreless. Enjoy the second half. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hi, I'm Dr. Andy from Evergreen Kia, and over the years, we delivered a lot of new Kias. This is Dr. Andy, interrupting myself for this important message. Evergreen Kia will meet and beat any advertised price, or you get the car for free and one year of free gas. For example, you could take home a brand new Kia Rio that gets 38 miles to the gallon and a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty for a payment as low as $99 a month. Only at Evergreen Kia, 92nd and Western. Take good care of my Kia. And we'll take good care of you. Jim the Hobo Guy reminding you that nobody has better deals on kitchen cabinets. Hobo has three styles of fully assembled kitchen cabinets in stock, ready to install, including our famous Amish-built oak and maple lines. Hobo now sells Haas custom cabinets. The line includes free computer design and free home delivery and, of course, the best prices anywhere. At Hobo, it's 10 to 50% less than those other guys, and we mean it. You never know what you will find at Hobo, but you will always find it for less. Larry Roche Chevrolet has the price you want to pay on a thousand Chevrolets. Larry Roche Chevrolet. We do have the vehicle you want and the price you want to pay. Like this new 07 Impala for only $199 a month. Or this new Equinox for just $16,790. Stop in today during our Red Tag event. Larry Roche Chevrolet on Grand Avenue. Gets the ball first to start the third quarter here on Christmas night. Jets need to win this game and win next week at home against Oakland to ensure a playoff berth. If they lose, they can still get in, but they put Cincinnati back in the driver's seat for the last spot. The numbers are not very pretty on offense. The third scoreless first half of an NFL game this season. And 
Miami's going to try to jumpstart their offense when this third quarter gets underway in the rain here in Miami by changing things up a little bit. Miami will receive the ball first to start this third quarter. And you see Cleo Lemon, who came into the game last week in Buffalo. Mike Nugent kicks off to Wes Welker, who fields it at the nine. Welker takes it to the 30, and here's Michelle Tafoya. Yeah, Nick Saban has benched Joey Harrington. He is starting Cleo Lemon here in the second half. It's not necessarily that Harrington did anything bad. He said, Saban said, it's tough sledding out here for both of these quarterbacks. But they wanted to see what Lemon could do, and this is the opportunity. They want to see if he can add a spark and get the ball moving a little better. But in general, he said the passing needs to be better. We need to finish plays. We need to finish blocks so we can actually get some scoring in this game. He said this game's going to come down to a defining moment. It may be Cleo Lemon who provides it, guys. So here is the 27-year-old out of Arkansas State who saw his first significant action last week against Buffalo and throws an incompletion there. And let's start right away. Joe, do you think Harrington should have been pulled? Yeah, he didn't play well. I, I thought Michelle, you know, captured Nick's discussions and explanation very well. It's all about performance. Joey played poor last week in Buffalo. He was pulled out of the game. He was given a chance here to make plays, and it didn't happen. Cleo Lemon will give you more versatility with his legs at this position, and that may be the spark that this offense needs. Acquired via a trade for A.J. Feely last year. Ronnie Brown runs left, runs into the waiting arms of Brian Thomas. Third down coming up. Let me go one step further with you, Joe. Uh, well, this is Ronnie Brown. Go ahead. Go ahead. To it. You do it. You do it. Let me go one step further here, then. Is this the end of Joey Harrington and the Miami Dolphins? Because this is two weeks in a row, even though he had a better first half this time than last time. He's had plenty of opportunity to try and prove himself, and he has not been able to do it. I would never say it's the end of anybody. But the competitive element of it is being decreased greatly by him to be able to be the starter. Dante Culpepper, if healthy, will be the starter of the Miami Dolphins next year. Third and ten. Here is Lemon hanging on, throwing. Three Jets were there, and it was nearly intercepted. Kerry Rhodes and Hank Poteet had a chance for an easy pick and didn't get it. But here's the other side of that, Tony. You take a guy like Cleo Lemons, who's only thrown 16 passes, and that was in a horrible weather last week. And you put him in a situation like this, you don't know what you're going to get. You could get three interceptions out of him. Now, maybe you're not getting yards out of Joey Harrington, but you're not getting anything negative. So, I mean, that's that's the balance that Nick has to figure out. Donnie Jones with a punt. Good one. 51 yards in the air. Washington had this spin move against Minnesota and had a decent return last week. Not this week. He'll be trapped inside of his own 20-yard line. I wonder what the Cincinnati Bengal fans are thinking. Rooting for the Dolphins, and then they turn to Cleo Lemon after Joey Harrington struggles in the rain, and his receivers didn't help him either in the first half. Once upon a time, there was this idea, one of those proverbial big ideas, an idea so big that it needed help making the leap between possibility and reality. This big idea, it's your idea. Now who's gonna help you make it real? a lot more exciting. Zoom, zoom. The Mazda It's Go Time sales event is here. Save on Mazda 3, Mazda CX-7, even the new Mazda 6 Sport Value Edition. Zoom, zoom. What's standard on it? What is it? Right now, get a 2007 Mazda 6i Sport Value Edition for under 20 grand. Plus, you may qualify for an extra $1,000 Mac bonus. To save on lots of Mazdas, go to your Mazda dealer for a test drive or visit MazdaUSA.com.
This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. We had significant thunderstorms roll through. You see up at the top of the screen, the bank of lights is out. Uh, each end zone bank of lights is out, but the uh, lights on each sideline are enough to keep the game going here tonight. So it might look just a hair darker than it normally looks here at Dolphin Stadium. There's a good news and a good sign for the Jets fans as Lavernius Coles has returned to the lineup. Coles took that vicious shot from Zach Thomas in the first half. Pennington, the Jets from the 19. There's the deep shot down the field. Justin McCarrens. Did he hold on? Yes, he did with Jeremiah Bell. And McCarrens for the second straight week gets a big game. This one worked on Will Allen. This looks like the first game that the Jets and Dolphins played. What happened is there weren't a lot of big plays. This one almost gets away from him. And he manages to hang on. As a matter of fact, if, if Yerman doesn't come over and make the hit, he probably drops this ball. Watch this. It's going to bounce off a of Bell into his stomach. And McCarrens winds up making the catch. Wow. McCarrens had a 50-yarder in Minnesota. It's challenged by Saban and the Dolphins to see if this 42-yard reception by Justin McCarrens will hold up. It's a good challenge, but obviously you Bell helped. Hold up. No, well, Bell helped him make the reception. Let's take another Watch kick this. here. It bounces off a Yerman Bell. There it is, right into his tummy. Miami is challenging the call on the field of a completed pass. It looks clean to me. Looks like he wrapped it up. Yep. Yeah, it looks clean to me. So Nick Saban uses a challenge. We'll see if the Jets will have the ball at the Miami 39. Two out of every three Pontiacs sold have 200 horsepower or more. Two out of three get 30 highway miles per gallon or better. They all come with the best coverage in America. And this holiday season, get into a new 2007 G6 sedan starting at 17210 after available cash back. Plus, it's your last chance to get the best factory-to-dealer incentives of the year during the final days of the Pontiac Red Tag event, but only until January 2nd. Get that money, man. Get that money, man. Get that money, yo, I gotta get that money, man. I gotta stack cheese. I gotta stack cheese. I need at least two G's. Hello, sir. 20 minutes away. Yes, sir. Bye. Business, meet pleasure. Avis is the cars you crave with the features you love right where you live. Avis, we try harder near you. This is the best time of the year, and it's only at your Toyota dealer. It's Toyota Fog, the perfect time to save on many of the Toyotas you've been wishing for. Get 0% APR for 60 months or 3,000 customer cash on the unstoppable Tundra. IntelliChoice's best when you buy it, best when you sell it, best while you own it. Or get a $2.99 a month lease for 36 months on the rugged Tacoma, America's best-selling compact truck. The Toyotathon year-end sales event. Hurry, time is running out. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by the all-new Mazda CX-7, the SUV you never saw coming. Walmart, be bright. Coca-Cola, football is best enjoyed refreshed. And T. Rowe Price, mutual funds, IRAs, college savings from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. There's some big yachts in Miami, but the Floridian, the one with the uh, Dolphins owner, Wayne Huizenga, it's a pretty good one. $77 million has a helipad on it. And Wayne Huizenga and the uh, current ownership of the Dolphins, strong in their intention to remain as the folks that own this great NFL franchise. Play being challenged, the 42-yard gain by McCarrens, Jeremiah Bell in coverage, and here's Jerry Austin. After reviewing the play, the call on the field of a completed pass stands. Even though the receiver bobbles the ball, there's no evidence to show that it touches the ground. Miami is charged with their first time out. Well explained, so the Dolphins lose a challenge as well, and here's another look at it. Jeremiah hits him in the stomach. He, if he just manages to wrap his arm around it, he'd have the ball. But uh, McCarron's lands on his back and winds up with the reception. So let's go back to the play. The play gains 42. Pennington on 14 passes only had 41 yards and all the short stuff, and there is that one or two deep shot down the field per game. This was the case we talked about in the first half 
you could see Miami's corners just jumping everything under five yards because Chad Pennington didn't throw it that far. Now they come out. Brian Schottenheimer does a nice job, the offensive coordinator, and takes the shot down the field. They get a big result. B.J. Askew out of Michigan is the fullback. Barlow, the deep back. And Kevin meets Zach Thomas. Loss of a yard and a half, and here's Susie Colbert. Well, Mike, it's good to see Lavernius Coles back. In the first half, he was leveled by Zach Thomas, and he suffered a laceration to his chin. Trainers worked on it for quite a long time, applied ice and adhesive to close the cut. He's wearing a thick gauze bandage. They had to work on the helmet to make sure it would fit over the bandage. You know, he's known so much for his toughness. Eric Mangini almost brushed it off at the half. Yeah, he'll be back, much to the dismay of the Dolphins, who consider him the most dangerous player on the field. He has 31 career touchdowns. Down catches nine of them Sues coming against the Dolphins second and 11 Pennington does a little jump pass to the tough Coles was yanked down by Channing Crowder at the 37 gain of four will have third and about eight coming up Lavernius Coles is one of the toughest receivers in football and that's the way people describe him just downright tough he's the team MVP and I remember in Washington played with a bad ham bad foot bad back but never missed a start third and eight Dolphins still down a starting corner Andre Goodman's out Michael Lehan bottom of your screen covering McCarran's Pennington looks that way throws and the route is jumped by Hill and the safety did not get it incomplete pass ruled by the umpire that it hit the ground. That would look like a terrible pass, Chad Joe. Pe Chad Pennington just gets nothing on the ball. I mean, the ball hangs in the air and manages to go to the ground, but still, if, if, if you're a quarterback and you don't throw the ball very hard, it's very difficult for receivers to protect themselves. The object is to catch the ball, put it away, protect yourself, and do something with it. Except on the long one, on the 40-yarder, most of the others just hit low. Garrett's had to bend down for that one. The kicker, Graham, kicks him end over end in these situations, using his Australian rules football technique to try to make it tougher to catch and easier to down inside the 20, but Wes Welker gets it at the 16 as the Jets eschew the opportunity to go for a 54-yard field goal on this rainy night. Time to make driving a lot more exciting. Zoom, zoom. The Mazda It's Go Time sales event is here. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Save on Mazda 3, Mazda 6, even the Mazda CX-7. You've never driven a crossover SUV like this. Zoom, zoom. Right now, lease a 2007 Mazda CX-7 front-wheel drive sport for just $289 a month for 24 months with $28.84 due at lease signing. To save on lots of Mazdas, go to your Mazda dealer for a test drive or visit MazdaUSA.com. What's up? Nothing. Check this out! Is that what you call a chair in Minnesota? It's <laughs> game time! Brilliant! Ah. Oh yeah! <laughs> Get the widest selection of your favorite team's gear at NFLShop.com. I want that! NFLShop.com Rose Bowl game presented by City, USC versus Michigan, New Year's Day on ABC. Uh, the replay and editing crew, Jim and Corny, Bo, Phil, Leslie there, Tracy, Greg, Remberg. This is a good, good group. John Mark Stewart, Brian, Sam, David Gray, Keith, Nat. They have a message for you. That's how they get ready for the game. See, we, our team does it as well. Brian Ryder, Jonathan Lebovich, uh, Andy Jacobson, John Marquis, Bob Salmi, Craven Martin, Adam Daly, part of our crew that gets all those great replays and those great looks week in, week out. Our Monday Night yeah, Football crew was spending. Scary. That, was, that scary. was like right out of one flew over the cuckoo's <clears throat> nest, I thought. That was scary. That or the scary. longest yard. Our Monday Night Football crew as we wrap up our season, spending Christmas away from their families. 
give them a chance for their loved ones at home to see them on this Christmas Day 2006. Sammy Morris, the back as the rain comes down heavy again. Run of about two yards to the 20. Dwayne Robertson made the tackle. So there's Eric Mangini, the youngest coach in the National Football League and the youngest coach in all of the four major North American professional sports as uh, the New York Jets, always the second child in New York after the long-established Giants, with a chance to get to the playoffs in this surprising season if they can win tonight and win next week at home against Oakland. Cleo Lemon, the backup quarterback, in on second down. Robertson in his face, put it up for grabs, incomplete. Intended for Darian Barnes, the fullback. Well, you know, the Jets, if you ever grew up in New York, you know that the Giants are the star. Oh, Jets win debut for Mangini. They were the green band on the New York Post week in, week out. Chad guns down Buffalo while Shockey's on the back page. The Devin Hester return. Mangenius, Jets stuck well, Belichick. Mangenius, though. At least they're starting with something. <laughs> Look, we both, both grew up there, and we know what that's like. The Giants are the number one team. They got the outsized personalities. They've got everything except they're not in the playoffs and the Jets are on the verge of being They the are the green band team <laughs> in the back page of the tabs. Right. Third and seven against a four-man rush. The backup lemon is brought down by Victor Hobson out of Michigan. Three and out Jets defense. As a result of that, I mean, when, you, when, when they give the lineups on the Jets, when their own players talk about everybody else on the team, if you don't live in New York, you haven't heard of anybody on this team. John Abraham was a big star. He left. Curtis Martin, a big star. He's injured. He can't play. Maybe you know Pennington. Maybe you know Coles. But you don't know. You know everybody on the Giants, and you don't know the Jets. They continue to get the job done. Their defense has done a very solid, quiet job here tonight. Another good kick by Jones. 49 yards. Leon Washington on the return. Turns it upfield. And Washington gives the Jets good field position in Miami territory at the Dolphins. 48-yard line. The penalty marker down back by the kick. Let's check it. Last time the Jets had a good return into Miami territory, a flag pushed them back. Looks like it's raining harder right now than it did in the first half. Ah, behind that sheet of rain is Chad Pennington. There's no foul on the play. Number 58, tripped over the man on the ground. We took, uh, we took shots before of, of Mangini, the youngest guy of all time. I thought he was the pizza delivery boy when I first met him. He's so young. Bring home the best from ESPN Home Entertainment. Relive the year's greatest sports moments on SportsCenter Year in Review. And four more DVDs with compelling stories. Own these one-of-a-kind titles. Available now exclusively at Walmart. When you shop Hobo, you'll save 10 to 50% every day on great items for your home. Hi, this is Jim the Hobo Guy, here to tell you how we deliver such great savings. Hobo buys nothing but deals from manufacturers, and we buy lots of them and pass the savings on to you. At Hobo, you will pay 10 to 50% less than what you'd pay at those other guys, and we mean it. Come on into Hobo and see what we've created just for you. You never know what you'll find at Hobo, but you will always find it for less. sale of the year. Now at RZA Chevrolet in Bridgeview. That's right. GM's Red Tag event is our last sales event of the year and everything's on sale. New vehicles, used vehicles, all available with the year's biggest savings. Like a new Cobalt for only $10,395 or just $129 a month. It's GM's Red Tag event, our final sale of the year at RZA Chevrolet in Bridgeview. RZA Chevrolet is the only place to buy. 
scoreless game, huge game for the Jets and all fans of teams in the mix in the AFC at the wild card spot still watching. And a lot of people around the league watching Jason Taylor picked for the Pro Bowl this week for the fifth time. Defensive player of the year candidate along with uh, Brian Erlacher and Champ Bailey and Sean Merriman having an outstanding season. Can he make a game changing play? The Jets run with Barlow. Ronaldo Hill in on the stop again of a couple of yards for Kevin. Jason Taylor has found himself in a rather unique situation in Dom Capers, the defensive coordinator of the, the Dolphins uh, defense. What happens is he has the ability to be able to line up in different stances and in different positions. You saw him in the four-point stance. Now he lines up in the two, and the tackle's not sure how to block him. And then he just takes the rookie to school. To Brickshaw Ferguson. Good job of running by the Jets there in Barlow to get within a couple of yards of the first down. Joe, what does the 3-4 do for Taylor's versatility? It, because he's he's built the way he is at 6-6 six, six and 250, he can play with his hand down, he can play in space, he can go in coverage. Remember, he has two interceptions, Mike. Both of them run back for touchdowns. As a matter of fact, of the eight interceptions the Dolphins have defensively, he has two. Zach, Ta uh, Zach Thomas, the middle linebacker, has one. And, it's, and this defense has also been great for Zach because they can move around. And Pennington told us this way, he can drop back in the lane and make those short passes so much tougher. Third and two, play action. Pennington hides it well. Covered long, comes to the second option through the hands of Cotchery. And incomplete. Well, that's a nice job by the Dolphin defense. This was an excellent play action fake by Chad Pennington. One of the best in the league at play action faking. Hides the ball very well. There's the move up the field. And Zach Thomas just gets back in the way. I mean, the ball, the ball's wet on a, dry, on a dry day. He probably would. Watch the punter drop it straight down to try to get it end over end, which he does. Make it tougher to catch and easier to keep inside the five. Brad Smith jumped before he got to the goal line. Oh. And the Jets try to do the toe dance with Brad Castle at the one. And they do. What a wonderful job by Wallace Wright, number 15. He makes the tackle as the second guy catch. Watch well, 15. He makes the tackle and keeps him out of the end zone. Welcome to the high def viewing experience. Doesn't look any different. Sure. Look at the resolution, the colors. Uh, he means it's no different than the one at Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Why does it cost so much more here? Well, we do have a super solar savings event. Oh, when's that? Every total solar eclipse, not lunar, solar. Sun comes around and... Sail. The same brand name HDTVs without the ridiculous markups. Get smart before you buy at walmart.com slash HDTV. It's time to make driving a lot more exciting. Zoom, zoom. The Mazda It's Go Time sales event is here. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Save on Mazda 3. Mazda CX-7, even the new Mazda 6 Sport Value Edition. So, so. What's standard on it? What is it? Right now, get a 2007 Mazda 6i Sport Value Edition for under 20 grand. Plus, you may qualify for an extra $1,000 Mac bonus. To save on lots of Mazdas, go to your Mazda dealer for a test drive or visit MazdaUSA.com. Disciplined investing. It isn't about star fund managers. At zero price, it's about experienced investment teams that stay the course. For each one, five, and 10 year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat their Lipper average. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. This holiday, there is a DVD that will take you by surprise. Where'd you play your college ball? I didn't play college ball. Inspired by a true story, Invincible, this season's perfect holiday gift. Own it on DVD and Blu-ray disc today. First time the Jets have ever played on Christmas Day or night. Third time for Miami. After that punt, Jason Taylor inadvertently poked in the eye. He was down for a moment, came off under his own power. The ball was down inside the one, but by rule, a punt down inside the one comes out exactly to the one. That's where Miami takes over. With Cleo Lemon, the backup in for Joey Harrington. And Ronnie Brown runs it off the goal line for a first down gain of 13 to the 14. It's a big play for the Dolphins. And this is the this is the area on the field where you have to be very careful 
And Mike Malarkey, the offensive coordinator of the Miami Dolphins, has to be careful what plays he calls and gives Cleo Lemon. The field's wet. You're not sure. You know, Ronnie Brown has that problem with his left hand. This is where the Jets have an opportunity to make a defensive play and change this game and get a score. Brown returning after the injured hand. Lemon pass deflected, but brought in by Justin Peel, the tight end out of Oregon. Going to be no gain. The tip came from Kerry Rhodes, who's made a lot of big plays for New York this year. People are not uh, privy to what we talk about during the breaks, but indeed, Joe, you did say that, that you thought that this game would be decided on one defensive play, not an offensive play. And when the punt was on the one, you think you do think that this could be the series in which it happens. This could be the series. I mean, they've got second down and long again. Uh, the Jets have been you know, somewhat advantageous when it comes to taking advantage, or opportunistic, I should say, taking advantage of uh, turnover. Second and ten, Brown snuffed out by Sean Ellis, along with his running mate, Sh uh, John Abraham. For six years, they did such a job on the ends for the Jets. Lost 10 pounds in the offseason, and his experience in the 3-4 defense has helped assimilate to this new defense. If nothing else, when you have the Dolphins backed up where you are now at 3rd and 13, how much time are you going to have Cleo Lemon hold the ball? Because you got to get receivers 13 yards down. And if they're forced to punt, the Jets should wind up with very, very good field position on this exchange. Lemon replaced the ineffective Joey Harrington at the start of this half. With time, the throw is caught, but shy of the first down. As Derek Hagan had to come back to get the ball, the rookie out of Arizona State did everything right to come back and get it, but he looks to be a half yard short. They yeah. will measure. I don't trust. I don't trust these anymore. Not after the first quarter when we saw him give them a first down <laughs> exactly. when they were short of the line. Exactly. Nice job by Cleolum. Good job by Hagan. Ball's on the outside shoulder, puts it on his body. When the weather's bad, as a quarterback. You want to try and throw to the bodies of the receivers. You don't want them extending their arms because it's very difficult to hold on to the wet ball. And if it's short, should be punted. Still a nice throw under pressure by Lemon. You see how short they are. And you almost have to punt this, you would think, and they short. will. Lemon is out of Arkansas State, not exactly a football factory. Sophomore season, 1998, was his most productive season. Dad, a teacher and a basketball coach in high school. Mom, a professor in the business department at Mississippi Valley State. Comes from a family of educators and getting his first big opportunity here at the end of this year. Also, Mike, one of those 30 free agents that the Dolphins have is going to be Cleo Lemon. Well, Donnie Jones... Ties a career high with his ninth punt on the night. Washington put it on the ground, but gets it back at his own 40-yard line. Good to know somebody's getting a record tonight, yeah. even if it's just the punter. Both punters may end up with the record tonight if it continues like this. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. you a very safe and happy holiday season. Are you picking up the kids? Well, I thought you were going to, honey, but I can't, which means that I'm going to have to cut my day short. I had a lot of errands. I had Hun? If a call is dropped with a long-winded talker, chances are they haven't noticed this. Drop call etiquette says call the person back immediately. Act like you heard what they said. Then let them continue their conversation. Domination with minimum interference. Or you could just switch to the network with the fewest dropped calls. Singular. Raising the bar. Now buy a Samsung phone and get three free. If there were a store in your town called Peace of Mind, would you pay it a visit? Across America, in towns big and small, there is such a place, New York Life. It starts with our values of financial strength, integrity, and humanity, and continues with our agents. So look for us in your town. You may already know our people, and we are confident that peace of mind is why New York Life is the company you keep. 
part of our Monday Night Football family. The folks who do graphics, audio, special technology, ESPN Deportes broadcast. Maria, Paula, Demo, Joe, Tyler, among others, Darren, Frank, Barry, Todd, and part of our uh, offensive line, our crew that clears the way for us to have such a great show week in, week out. Rob Adamski, Kerry Callahan, Scott Prey, Doug, Pat, among others, and uh, Alex Stern and Steve Hurt. No cheering out of that group, though. No, they, they, they were quietly cheering. Alex and Steve, who uh, handle uh, so much of our information here as we prepare for the games. We are indebted to all. Thank you, and uh, happy holidays. Jets' last five possessions. One first down. Barlow is the back on this series. Just shy of the 45. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Jason Taylor is still not returned on defense for Miami. You see him sitting on the bench there. I've been watching. They put drops in his eyes on two separate occasions. It's the right eye. He is questionable. This must not have been some, you know, mild poke in the eye. He, it seems that when they cover his left and ask him to follow a finger with his right, he's really frustrated. He can't seem to do it. So he does not look encouraged right now, guys. Okay, Michelle, David Bowens is seeing most of the time. Bowens has been on the field a lot. He's good, but he's no Jason Taylor. The 44, Barlow, yard and a half. Jeff Scanina, one of the Dolphins in there defensively, along with Vonnie Holiday. The way you see the Jets approaching this, is the way they have to play. They need yards on first and ten. They don't get penalized a lot. They can't get into long yardage situations. And this is basically the way they like it. Third down and five, third down and four. Converting third downs. They're 42.9%, 43% in third down conversion. McCarron's in motion. Pennington straight back. Straight ahead. First down, Chad Pennington scrambles and slides at the 39-yard line. Pickup of 15. To that point, Joe, uh, Pennington, he didn't pass then. He ran then. But he's fourth in the NFL on third down conversions passing. You know, But the way he passes, they're in a lot of third down situations because he's not taking big chunks of yards up the field. No, they, by don't, they don't get the big chunks. And that's the second time tonight that he has taken off and run and converted a third down and picked up quite a few yards. Out of Marshall, where he was uh, in national consideration for the Rhodes Scholar program. But they knew his first love was football, so he steered away the committee there. On play action, hit as he throws downfield for McCarron, who's trying to get back to the ball and draws the flag for pass interference. There's a case where if you don't have a strong arm, it works to your benefit. <laughs> because the receiver... Pass interference, 37 defense, automatic first down. Jeremiah Bell. Jeremiah Bell is trying to cover Justin McCarrens. We saw him before. Now McCarrens gets by him. If this ball's up, there's a chance maybe for a touch. Instead, he has to come back and try and make a play on the ball. And... The contact is made before so you penalize you the defender, belt. even though it's the quarterback responsible for the ball being short. Penalty 28, second trip in the red zone for the Jets and the waiting arms of 37-year-old, 15-year veteran Keith Trailer brings down Barlow. Ten possessions for the Jets, a, a botch snap on a field goal, and then after that, a whole, that was the second one you see there, a whole lot of nothing. A lot of three play drives four play drives the only time they've gone down the field was the catch by McCarron's that was challenged and upheld and this drive so those two plays to McCarron's really most of the Jets offense tonight you keep this up man Gini will be 48 years old at the end of the game he will worry so Ray much Hare. yeah it's only 35 now Brad Smith is in the game for the Jets top of your screen three receivers right Pennington looks that way throws that way Coles incomplete Dolphins wanted the offensive pass interference flag. Will Allen out of Syracuse on the coverage. Do not get offensive pass interference by wide receivers called very often. A lot of times you get it called on tight ends. There's the move inside. He just runs up. Ah, a little, the other feet got tangled. That's a, that's a good no call by the official. Over his career, Pennington has been great in the red zone. Good quarterback rating, 48 touchdowns, two interceptions. Both of those interceptions in the red zone in his career have come this season. Against the Bears. Third and ten. 
Pennington throws, caught, and what a tackle by Zach Thomas on Cotchery. It looked like Cotchery was going to spin him around and go to the end zone. He is stopped shy of the first down, a field goal for the first points of the game coming up. There's your thing again, Joe, with who's going to hold for the kick. And you say it should be quarterbacks, and they're going to it's the punter. They it is going right? to be the punter, it right. won't change, but now he's coming out with some gloves on. What a tackle by Zach. He's got one ankle to get the touchdown, and he tripped. Oh, what a play. He's wearing gloves. Ben Graham. Hope is, they're not boxing gloves. Well, Ben Graham has got gloves, and it should make a more tackle. Nugent from 22 for the first points of Christmas night. Hold was good, and Mike Nugent makes his 14th consecutive field goal. The old Buckeye out of Centerville, Ohio, bangs it through. Nick Saban's defense does do a good job, but... After 42 minutes and 35 seconds, we got one on the board. 3-0 Jets. This could be an insurmountable lead tonight. The way it's going. I it always like. say that in soccer. When it's 1-0, it's an insurmountable lead. Well, guys, we've been thanking our crew and uh, letting them share holiday wishes. This is the main portion of our crew. Production and support starting with uh, Jed Drake, our executive producer. Jay Rothman in the tie. Chip Dean in the very festive Hawaiian shirt. It's our producer and our director. And that's, uh, those are the coaches of our team. They get the job done for all of us week in, week out. Andy Reichwald, Jeff Devine, Nancy Volker, who makes us look pretty. Oh, as pretty as well. Well, tries. She the tries Vegas, anyway. Greg Kwok, Brian Monahan, Of course, uh, Amy Shapiro. Jeff and Amy were and there. And Jeff Leonardo as well who uh, help us get around on a week-in, week-out basis. And up here in the booth, Mike Black, our spotter, Marty Aronoff, the best stat man in the history of the game, Tony Granary, who helped spot as well, Nick Shafter and uh, Don Squar, among those who have helped us throughout the year. Uh, thank you, one and all, and happy holidays. And one other thing I'd like to add, Mike, to our men and women in the armed forces around the world, Merry Christmas to you. Please come home safe. Know that we care about you. Ditto. Jets on the board, leading 3 0. Nugent the kick. Welker from the goal line. Wes Welker stopped at the 25, the first hit coming from Rashad Washington, the safety. Here's the AFC playoff story now. We have all divisions clinched with San Diego, Baltimore, Indianapolis, and New England as division winners. Denver, by virtue of that win by one at home over Cincinnati. If the Broncos win, they're in the playoffs. If the Jets go win-win, they're in the playoffs. Cincinnati would be the team back in control of its own fate, its own destiny, if the Jets lose here tonight. So those are some of the scenarios. And then all the eight and sevens that are still alive need a significant amount of help that we could not detail in 30 seconds. Lemon, first down toss. Randy McMichael, who dropped three balls last week. The tight end gets a dozen yards on the first down at the 39. Yeah, but in this in this offense coming into this game, Michael, Randy McMichael had 53 catches and only one touchdown. <laughs> Excuse me, the longest being 23 yards. Nice piece of play action. You can do this with Cleo Lemon because he can put the threat of the run on the perimeter of the Jet defense. Lemon seeing action in his third game, but his second significant action here on the season. Ronnie Brown, big hole. Ronnie Brown into the secondary. Pulled down by Kerry Rhodes at the 44. First down gain of 17. And the Dolphins offense makes its most noise of the night. There appears to be an awakening on both teams. They had slept through all of the game to this point, and now maybe there's a game. It was a little too rainy and wet. Ronnie Brown doing a nice job of using his eyes and his quickness. They consider the, the direction that a runner starts is called the front side. Mm -hmm. Then when he comes on back, he's done a nice job coming back to the backside, as has this offensive line. And it was Damian McIntosh, the left tackle, who went to high school at MacArthur High School over in Pembroke Pines, not too far from here in the Hollywood area. Good block last time. Now Brown comes right with his 15th carry of the night, takes it to the 39-yard line. He has uh, six first downs on his 15 carries this evening. Pretty good backfield he was in, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, with Cadillac Williams. Yes. Yeah, and, and the quarterback of the Redskins. Jason, Jason Camp. Camp. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a lot of talent there. The Jets' Andre Dyson, their starting corner, who has been the one steady corner on this team all year, absorbed most of that contact from Brown, and he is uh, slow to get up, and he is going to have to come off the field here. The cornerback position of the Jets has been a unique situation for Eric Mangini. 
what he basically has done is he's kept it competitive. Now, the constant was Andre Dyson. But the other corner, you got Justin Miller, David Barrett, Hank Poteet. You know, Matt, they, you have all these different guys playing on, on the other corner he's, opposite him. He's done that in running back as well. Right. I mean, again, the lack of stars on the Jets is remarkable for a team that is, is able to play its way into the playoffs. You can't, most people cannot name five players on the New York Jets this year. And that's why Eric Mangini deserves great consideration for coach of the at, year. At the moment, you would say that Sean Payton was probably the leading candidate. Yep. Mangini was there. And by the way, based on the last few weeks and where the Eagles find themselves today, Andy Reid, yep. you would not be embarrassed to vote for Andy Reid for coach of the year. I agree with you. With Dyson out, David Barrett, who has three interceptions and a couple of starts this season, comes in at the corner for the Jets. Second five, very tight with the fullback and the running back. Lemon to Welker. Here's West, top catch man on this Dolphins team to the, this season. First down to the 28-yard line, a pickup of 11. What I've noticed with Cleo Lemon, Mike Malarkey, the offensive coordinator, has made things real simple. You don't see a lot of shifting. You don't see a lot of movement, which you saw with Joey Harrington. Sometimes coaches try and outsmart themselves by moving around too much. Here's a young guy. Doesn't really know a lot, so keep it simple. Run a bootleg to the right, a bootleg to the left, get it in the hands of the other people and make some plays. End of three, Miami driving, trying to tie or take the lead. Up to $500 off. Um. Two rooms for the price of one. Get the second room for free. Uh, yeah, the largest flooring selection in mm -hmm. Chicagoland. Expert installation, a lifetime warranty. You know, 773202. Luna's New Year New Floor Sale. Yeah! New Year New Floors and up to $500 off. At Luna, we've got you covered. 773202. Luna. What if there was a LASIK procedure customized for just your eyes? One that could make your contacts and glasses disappear? What if you could wake up seeing the alarm clock and enjoy your lifestyle activities without corrective lenses? What if there was a LASIK procedure that offers results that are sharper and clearer than traditional LASIK? Introducing Ladar Vision Custom Cornea Wavefront Guided LASIK. For a free custom cornea LASIK evaluation, call the Pantone Eye Center at 708-452-7200. Stay calm. We're going to save you. Stop freaking out. Hop into the basket. One at a time. Save some cabbage. Sign up for Comcast Digital Voice for just $39.95 a month, every month. With unlimited local and long distance plus voicemail. Because the less money you pay, the more you get to keep for yourself. Just call 1-888-COMCAST. Comcast Digital Voice. It's Comcastic. The Jets and Dolphins have played so many memorable games over the year. Go back to the Monday Night Miracle at the Meadowlands in 2000 when the Jets had the huge deficit to the Dolphins going into the fourth quarter, but then rally back behind Vinny Testaverde. Who will ever forget Jumbo Elliott's reception and John Hall's overtime field goal after the Jets erase a 23-point deficit going into the fourth to win 40 to 37 in overtime just one of the great memories and will there be another monday night memory out of this one fourth quarter begins with the dolphins best drive of the night trailing the jets three nothing jets need to win and win on sunday against the raiders to get into the playoffs lemon first down throw down the middle it is caught by mcmichael at the nine yard line first and goal miami I told Joe during the break, the game would end 27-20. There'll be an offensive explosion. We'll see nothing but touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Joe. Real simple. Cleo Lemon, nice throw. Gets the ball out nice and quick. He can, get, he can get all the throws. And by that, I mean he can throw it hard down the middle if he needs to. He puts touch on the ball. Does a lot of different things. Now they're going to be called for an illegal substitution. 12 men in the huddle. Five-yard Five penalty. Yard. You see the comparison of the two quarterbacks tonight. Harrington played the first half. Lemon's numbers added by that 20 yarder to McMichael to start the fourth year, but now they'll be pushed back to the 13 yard line. I hate to be skeptical about Mr. Lemon, but I mean, if he's so good, why haven't we seen him before? Because he's so young, and Joey Harrington was the guy that they gave up a sixth round pick for, and they gave him a chance to play when Dante Culpepper was hurt. 
from the 13. Marcus Vick, Michael's brother, in the game. Fake to Vick. Lemon throws complete to McMichael again. Gets the penalty yardage back to the seven-yard line. This is inexperience at the quarterback position. Once he makes the fake, if he gets the ball to Randy Michael McMichael right away, he has a chance to turn it up and use his size and strength. See, he's open right now. Wait, wait, wait. He waits. He looks back. You can't do that. The play is designed to go to Randy McMichael, make the play action fake like you did on the play that started this series and get the ball in his hands. Jets still without Andre Dyson, their cornerback. Right leg injury on this drive. His return questionable. Second and goal. Lemon over the middle. Caught by McMichael. Dragging to the end zone. Miami touchdown. That's a nice job. I'm telling you, that's the first of four touchdowns we will see <laughs> in the fourth quarter. This is going to turn into one of the great games in history. The first National Football League touchdown pass by Lemon. Kerry Rhodes, who's made so many big plays for the Jets this year, couldn't wrap up the 6'3", 255-pound McMichael. Olindo Mare adds the extra point, and these Dolphin fans who have sat in the rain all night have reason to cheer as McMichael scores his second touchdown of the year. Four catches on that drive for 45 yards after not catching one the entire game. 7-3, Miami. I was pretty nervous, uh, apprehensive. Uh. It was tough to tell him I was joining the Army at first. I uh, did research on my own, tried to get an idea about what the Army was going to be like. It's given me a whole bunch of confidence. But no, I'm, I'm very proud of him. He's just a stronger, more driven individual. He could outrun me. <laughs> if your son or daughter wants to talk about joining the Army, listen, you made them strong, we'll make them Army strong. Find out more at GoArmy.com. If your wealth isn't working for you, then neither is your financial advisor. Smith Barney Financial Advisors have, on average, 16 years of industry experience. We don't sell our own mutual funds, so we can offer independent advice. And only Smith Barney Financial Advisors have direct access to the depth of Citigroup's global resources. Experience. Independence. Depth. Come to Smith Barney, where wealth works. Resolution, more capability, style, power, space. How about saving money during Nissan's national year-end sales event? Save 3200 on the 2006 Nissan Altima Special Edition. Plus, get up to $1,000 bonus cash on select Nissans on top of all other incentives through January 2nd. The people who bring you the pictures every Monday night, our great camera crew, uh, Robin and Glenn, Eddie, John, Alpo, Sean, and some people not in this picture as uh, they worked on this uh, Christmas, Kevin and Larry, Phil, Mike, Vic, Timmy Two, Jason, Greg, just among the names. Ray, don't leave out Ray. Don't leave out Ray. Get to everybody here on the list, uh, George, Todd, Marshall, among others. Thank you. Those are the guys who very often are out in the rain, in the inclement weather, and we've had enough of that this year. Our entire crew Merry Christmas to you and Merry Christmas to your families who are so understanding as you leave every holiday and every week to help uh, continue one of the great sports traditions Monday Night Football our 37th season of Monday Night Football wrapping up here and the Dolphins Olindo Mare sends it all the way out of the end zone as Miami all of a sudden has some life and we go down to Michelle Tafoya Mike Randy McMichael all of a sudden has some life he was major on that drive and ended up with the score he had been frustrated he told me by what he called a new role he had always been a main go-to guy but this season they needed him in pass protection he's a tight end so they put him there he said you know I'm not going to pout about it I'll block all game long I've adjusted to it but I don't want to get used to it well he got, he's got to feel some measure of relief and satisfaction after that drive in which he played a key role and then scored the touchdown, Mike. Yes, Michelle, he had eight catches in that first game against the Jets. Was hoping for a big game here tonight after the drops last week in Buffalo. It's on Chad Pennington and the Jets offense right now. From the 20, incomplete. 
That one was intended for Stacy Tut, the fullback who's lined up as a receiver. That just slipped right out of his hands. That's Stacy Tut. Tut is a, a rookie, but that, that one just slipped right out. Now, Chad Pennington is one of those guys that looks like the weather and the ball bothers him. When he went to the sidelines before the last series, he was talking to the ball buyers. Remember, you can bring your own balls to the game. You're allowed to bring your own footballs to the game. You pick them out. They can work them a bit. Get them so you can grip them. Second and ten, another throw. This one is complete to Chris Baker. Gain of 11 for the tight end who played for Nick Saban during his time at Michigan State. We're getting near the magic score, by the way, if the Dolphins were to score again. The Jets do not come from behind very well. They won only one game in the last three years trailing by eight or more. So they got to keep it they so that it's a one possession game for exactly. them or they're not going to win it. Well, they don't have if the you ability. go by the numbers. They don't have the ability to throw the ball down the field, more specifically Chad Pennington. First and ten. This is a run. That's a live ball and can be recovered by Miami. And Cotterey was alert to get it. The Jets throw many of those backwards passes. That one may have been deflected by Bowens, who almost hopped up and recovered it. David Bowens is playing a little bit like Jason Taylor on the other side. Cotterey does a good job of staying alert. How many times have you seen a guy drop this ball and just say, ah, oh, gee whiz, I missed it. Did a nice job of staying alive. But the Jets do that so often in their offense, their receivers have a hair more awareness. And Bowens was the one who helped make that play and almost came up with that big play you've been talking about, Joe. Second and 13 throw. Is complete to McCarrens to the 32-yard line. Channing Crowder's been good tonight. Another tackle for the former Florida Gator. We'll have third and about eight coming up. When you say he can't go down the field, I mean, he's taken a couple of shots, and I'm, they've been short. But he, he, even the one that Justin McCarrens caught, the 42-yarder. He was Remember, short on that. Well, and the ball just doesn't travel that right. far. The, you don't see the arm strength. Guys, Jason Taylor back in and wearing a visor after getting poked in the eye on that punt in the third quarter. Big pass rush down. One of the best sack men in the league in there on third and eight. Pennington sideline throw is caught by Brad Smith for the first down at the 45. He got it just over Tavares Tillman that was caught by the former quarterback at Missouri. Now we know he can throw it about 14 or 15. Years. Yeah, this one, this one just barely gets over. I mean, this is that one's just up in the air, just enough. Got those big receivers. Smith, a guy who ironically lacked the arm strength to be a quarterback in the NFL. The guy who uh, threw for 9,000 yards and ran for 4,000 yards is uh, developing into the Jets slash player. First down run with Kevin Barlow. The Jets run game has gone nowhere here tonight. It's hard to believe that, I mean, watching Chad Pennington, who's a very bright guy, very accomplished quarterback, very accurate, but it's hard to believe that anyone lacks the arm strength to play in the NFL. If he's played in the NFL on this level, nobody lacks the arm strength. Chad Pennington has always been a guy that they talk about not throwing the ball particularly well or hard, especially in the middle of the field. His mechanics are he throws it with his arm, doesn't get his body involved and put his, and put his zip on it. Jets have only run it for 88 yards on 26 attempts, so a lot of throws here down the stretch. Pennington underthrown and nearly intercepted by Michael Lehan. McCarrens was the receiver, and that one was sitting out there to be picked. He can't make that throw. That throw requires zip. What happens is the corners play up, the safety plays back. It's a cover two defense. And he tries, to, he sets, makes the fake, tries to get it up the field. Now that ball's a spiral, and that, that should have been an interception. I mean, there, there's no other way. I mean, that ain't even close. Why do they call that play for him, then? Well, if he can't make the throw, why do they call the play? It's an adjustment that the receiver makes a, on his route. Third and ten, Jason Taylor, top of your screen, rushing. Some help for Ferguson, the rookie. Pennington, the outlet is complete, and Washington makes the play to get the first down to the 35-yard line. What a 20-yard pickup by the rookie out of Florida State. It's another third down. Leon he's, Washington. He's made both third down conversions. Leon Washington making a play. This ball is caught 
five yards short of the first down marker. And then one guy misses, another guy misses, Zach Thomas misses, another one misses. Hard to catch those 5'8 guys, Tony. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he doesn't catch the ball a lot either. Kevin Barlow with the run for three yards. Susie Colbert is more on Washington. Well, I asked Leon where he developed his elusive moves, and he said, it's going to sound funny, but he owes it to a game he loved on the playground. There's a little kid called Hot Ball. One guy with the ball tries to make ten guys miss. He used the moves of Pop Warner, and he's still using them in the pros. And he said, he being a lot smaller, that's how I get my leverage on the defense, because you don't want a defender to square up on you. You get, you get them thinking you're going one way, and you go the other. A terrific star in North Florida growing up first to graduate high school from his family and uh, making that family proud here tonight. Askew comes back to be the fullback. Gets with the uh, power formation to the left. Pennington steps up, felt the heat, throws it for Cotchery. Is the catch? No signal yet that it's not. So it looks to be, let's see. Anybody want to make a signal? Just look at each other. No, they just take complete. They take incomplete. the ball and walk back. Incomplete. Donnie Sprague, the linebacker, put the pressure on Pennington. That one's on the ground. Good try, though. He squirt through, and we'll give the Jets another third and seven. From here, a field goal. With the wind dying down a bit, would be 50 yards. Pennington throwing down the middle for Country. Jets touchdown. What a throw that one was. I mean, you know, hasn't made a throw all night. Made that one. One minute it looks like Chad Pennington struggles throwing the ball down the field. Now all of a sudden, bang! One official signal touchdown, and now they're talking about it. The official on the goal line, first signal touchdown. Now they come in and discuss it. Let's wait to see what the call will be here on the field. The receiver is written down on the one yard line. First and goal at the one. Jeremiah Bell once again is the guy that they picked on. We see Justin McCarrens make a couple catches on him. Now this time, Kotri makes the catch. Mangini waiting for word from upstairs if they should review that or not. Here's another look at Kotri as he goes forward. It's where the ball is when his knee comes down. Now that look looks like a touchdown. It's where the ball is when his knee comes down. And by putting his toe out there, he kept himself alive long enough. And the Jets will challenge here. Good chance this one's a touchdown. Well, you a, need to see it from the side. I mean, that that, that view doesn't show. The Jets will challenge the call on the field that the runner did not score. All right, so the Jets will use a challenge for the first time tonight. Halfway through the fourth, will the Jets be on top by two on this extra effort by Kachari? This January, four friends are trying to hang on. I thought you had it. For dear life. Okay, let's just take a moment of silence. Okay, that's good. In case of emergency, a new comedy premieres Wednesday, January 3rd, only on AB. Two out of every three Pontiacs sold have 200 horsepower or more. Two out of three get 30 highway miles per gallon or better. They all come with the best coverage in America. And this holiday season, get into a new 2007 G6 sedan starting at 17210 after available cash back. Plus, it's your last chance to get the best factory to dealer incentives of the year during the final days of the Pontiac Red Tag event, but only until January 2nd. Our SUVs. As much fun as our bikes. You think you can handle it? Can you? Introducing the all new Suzuki XL7 mid size crossover SUV. It's gonna be a great ride. Get 0% financing on XL7 with no payments till March 07. Offer ends January 2nd. No, I just wanna. Yeah! Remember when wishes came true? Yes! Yes! They still can. Yes! 
Introducing the BMW Holiday Wish Event. The best time to buy the new 2007 X3 SAV with X-Drive all-wheel drive. Lease a BMW before January 2nd and we'll make a contribution to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Okay, so we have Jerry Austin, the Dean of Referees in the National Football League, longest serving. We've gone under the hood here for a look. Was the catch by Jericho Kachery a touchdown? Ruled on the field, first a touchdown, then they sit down at the one. After reviewing the play, the ball is over the goal line before the runner touches down. Touchdown. The Jets will not be charged with a timeout. And the Jets take a 9-7 lead. I'm not going to gloat yet, but I said there'd be four touchdowns no. in the fourth quarter. I am halfway there at the moment. You what a job here, guys, by Kachery to get that left foot down and propel himself forward over the goal line. A great job to get a touchdown here. And what a wonderful throw by Chad Pennington. Chad Pennington does a terrific job. He ought to feel good ball. about that. That was the first pass all night that was right on the money. Michael, Deep. Michael Lehan, number 30 for the Miami Dolphins, gave him a present by not picking one off. Well, a big moment for Pennington, who has improved his performance. Please reset the game clock to 8.04. Put 8.04 on the game clock. Improved his performance here in the second half. And to that point, the Jets responding to their first bit of adversity tonight after Miami scored. The Jets driving 11 plays and 80 yards, and Pennington was 5 of 8 yeah. and had all 80 yards on that drive. We're sitting here and we're picking him apart, basically, because he doesn't have arm strength, and his team is now in the lead. Well, but this you know, is, I mean, he had a great no. time. And on the third downs, did everything he had to do. This is the kind of a game the Jets have to play with Chad Pennington. Like you said, Tony, if they get down by 8 or more, they haven't sure. been able to come back and win. It's a, it's a game of control. Graham, good hold. Nugent bangs the extra point, guys. This is the way the Jets have played all year, and this is the way the Jets and Dolphins have played for 40 years. Pennington brings them back. Gang Green, plus three. Sometimes the best idea is the one that helps others have ideas. More power, space, capability. How about saving money during Nissan's national year-end sales event? Get 2750 Nissan cash back or 1% financing on the Titan King Cab. Plus, get up to $1,000 bonus cash on select Nissans on top of all other incentives through January 2nd. Hackers, fishers, thieves, the enemies of your idea. How will you keep it safe? The Rose Bowl game presented by City, USC versus Michigan, New Year's Day on ABC. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. HDTV, powered by DLP. It's amazing. It's the mirrors. Budweiser, bright, crisp, clean, pure. This is Budweiser. This is beer. And NFL.com, the greatest Super Bowl team of all time. NFL.com slash America's game. On this Christmas night from Miami, our aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. 14th National Football League game ever played on Christmas Day. Most famous one played by the Dolphins. The 1971 Divisional Playoff against Kansas City. The double overtime won by Miami. Here they went on to win the Super Bowl. That game uh, going into double OT and won on a Garrow E Premium field goal 35 years ago today. Mike, it seems like Chad Pennington is always fighting a perception. I can't throw the ball that well. I can't throw it that hard. It turns out he's just been very productive. He manages to keep the game at a level where he can be successful. He's smart, protects the he's ball very well. Smart. But I mean, he's smart with the football, too. Here's the Nugent kickoff to Welker from the one. Wes Welker returned to the 28 yard line. It's Wallace Wright helping on the tackle. 
and it's Pennington's ability to get the ball out of his hands. Even though it's third and 10, he just dumps the ball off underneath to Leon Washington, and then Washington does his thing. Susie talked about him growing up and making 10 guys miss. Well, in this play, he only had to make five. That's why he was able to pick up those 17 yards. That, the should have been interception that went right through Michael Lee Han's hands, and the Jets able to bang off 11 plays and 80 yards to take the lead 10 7. And now Cleo Lemon, seeing his most significant playing time of his NFL career, takes over from the 27. And Lemon throws for Wes Welker, incomplete. Now look at Cleo Lemon playing for a job as a backup behind Dante Culpepper. And by the way, I want to correct something Steve Young said in, in the first half we talked about. Dante missing a meetings. Dante has not missed any meetings with the Miami Dolphins. He did miss a meeting because he got surgery on his knee and then came back. But, you know, Steve wanted to make sure we got that out there. And Cleo Lemon, to me, looks like a guy, you know, having replaced Joey Harrington the last two weeks, having a shot at, at the backup job. Second and 10 from the 27-yard line. Here's Ronnie Brown dancing forward, a gain of about eight. Well, the Jets, you can say, uh, counterpunched Miami's score. And uh, boxing is such a big part of Eric Mangini's life. As Susie told you right at the start of our broadcast tonight, his dad would sit and watch Friday night fights with him. Uh, his dad has passed away since, but his love of boxing is translated to the message and the method to motivate this Jets team. And uh, much like one of his mentors in the big tree, Bill Belichick and Bill Parcells, Parcells had a relationship with Teddy Atlas, the great trainer of Mike Tyson and championship fighters. And Teddy Atlas has become one of the message makers, passing on words of encouragement to the Jets and Mangini's teams this year. See what they do here on third down as Lemon throws the deep ball for Welker. Big hit, broken up, incomplete. The rookie, Eric Smith out of Michigan State, joined Justin Miller in coverage, and Welker took the worst of it. And he's shaken up. Justin Miller manages to reach his left arm over and knock this away. Walker goes up. Remember, Miller's going to the Pro Bowl as a kick return. Nice job. Reaches right in, knocks the ball away. And then Welker just takes the shot from Eric Smith. Shot. Yeah, right to the rib area there. And they look at Wes Welker down on the sideline. We talked to you about uh, the Jets and Teddy Atlas and uh, getting the message. Susie has more on that. Well, Mike, Teddy Atlas has spoken to the Jets three times. The first time was right before the second New England meeting, and New England had beaten the Jets seven straight times. So as a model, Atlas used one of his guys, Mike Tyson, and he said his greatest strength was that he intimidated people. He had guys beat before they ever even got into the ring. So he said, how about you stop using your imagination about how great the New England Patriots are and instead just go out and play. Of course, we know that they did beat the Patriots and he's offered such great perspective and insight and truly helped this team. It's not as though Herman Edwards was running a poor franchise. Herman Edwards is no. doing a good job with the Jets but Mangini has brought a different culture to this team and this group has responded to those messages Susie was talking about among other ways and Mangini ran a very tough camp as his introduction to this Jets team. Well, when Pennington was healthy though Herman Edwards had a great record. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, as Pennington goes, the Jets go in the last few years. The big hit by the defensive secondary forces the punt, the tenth punt of the game for Jones. Will come after this flag. Ball start, 59 of the offense, five yards. It's still fourth down. We mentioned Eric is the youngest coach in the four North American professional sports. To that end, Eric Mangini is the first head coach to appear on Monday Night Football who was born after Monday Night Football started. The Jets <laughs> played the first game against Cleveland September 1970. Never saw it. Mangini born 71. Nearly a punt block opportunity for Eric Smith who had the big hit a moment ago. Jets let this bounce. It hit the back of the Jets. Brad Castle and the Dolphins may get a golden opportunity here. Castle was blocking. Unbeknownst to him, the ball bounced up, hit his calf, and let's see who gets it on the pile. Taylor says Miami. Miami's got the. They have the ball. It took a big bounce backwards. Yes, it did. Big one. Dolphins have come out of the pile with it. 
You, you and John Denny, the long snapper. You see, you don't run away with the ball because the officials, what you do is you hand it to the official just to make sure you know that he has it. You know, it's in my hands. Here, Mr. Official, I have the ball. Interesting. Denny came out with it. He's the man who snapped it back to the punter, and let's see what the result is. On the kick, the ball hit a receiving team player, recovered by the kickers, first down. Miami ball. The game's first turnover. There's Castles trying to block. Doesn't hits, see it at all. Hits him in his elbow. Doesn't see it at all. Dolphins take over at the Jets 43 with a great opportunity. Tonight on SportsCenter, after Monday Night Football, reaction and analysis from a critical AFC matchup in Miami and why the sister of the Jets, Nick Mangold, is making football history. SportsCenter, right after Monday Night Football. watch TV all night or get off your keister and get a car. Yep, get approved right now. Just go online to golinch.com. That's what I did. It's easy. All you need is a full-time job and a hundred bucks down. And I got a sweet deal. So try golinch.com or call the number on your screen. Get approved, get a car, done. Then you can go back to watching the trash on TV all night. As we've seen all year in football, you can't legislate for luck and what happens in a game. The Jets special teams have been terrific this year. Mike Westoff, who was the special teams coach with the Dolphins for a decade and a half. Great coverage teams, great return teams, but one bounce of the ball into the elbow of Brad Castle forces the turnover. Dolphins start in Jets territory for the first time tonight. Leo Lemon gives to Ronnie Brown the Jets defense and Eric Martin leads it gain of a couple. Hey, you see it again. What the returner has to do, what Leon Washington has to do, is we use the term Peter, Peter, Peter. It was just an alert to different guys that are blocking for you to get away that there's a problem. So you make a scream and a yell and just have them get away. Just get away from the ball. Game of two, second and eight. 620 left in this one. And Lemon throwing underneath behind the receiver. But a good job to scoop it up by Derek Hagan. It's a catch and a first down for the third round draft pick. Of course, Marty Booker, the starting wide receiver, is out of this game with an injury. Derek Hagan had 17 catches coming in. It was a nice job of getting the ball. Booker missed the first game against the Jets, and Hagan had six grabs in that one for 66 yards. He's the all-time leading receiver in Arizona State history. Lemon, 8 of 13, and a touchdown toss tonight. In the flat, look out! Good job by McMichael to hold on as Kerry Rhodes made the tackle in the open field. And about a gain of a yard. Kerry Rhodes is one of those guys you watch, and he flashes at you. I mean, he's around the ball. We, you talked about it, Mike. Four interceptions, four sacks, four fumbles. He's just close to the ball making plays. And, and that's what you need from a safety. Somebody active who can cover different parts of the field. Went to Louisville, wanted to be a quarterback. Still swears he should be a quarterback. But Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator there, said, you got the aggressiveness to be a safety. <laughs> Talked him into it. He's turned into be a darn good one here in the NFL. Five-minute mark. Fourth quarter. Lemon, pressure off the edge, doesn't get there. The pass does. 
to Hagan. Despite the Miller hit, first down, and the young guys for the Dolphins getting the job done on this money drive. Look at the offense we're seeing in one quarter. You're right. Look at it. Look at it. And what it is is these guys are the ones that get to work together in training camp. What happens is Dante Culpepper worked a lot with Chris Chambers and Marty Booker. Well, that left Wes Welker and Derek Hagan to work with Cleo Lemon, and you develop a chemistry. All this happening after the Jets turnover on the punt. Brown. Victor Hobson got an arm on him. Brown gets to the 13. We're going to go inside of four minutes here in regulation. And I notice you say regulation. And I know what you're <laughs> thinking when you say regulation because the field goal puts it into an overtime situation. And you have said, what's better, Mike, than overtime with a team that needs to win? to get into the playoffs. Yeah, and again, if the Jets do lose tonight, they're still alive, but they lose control of their destiny, and it's the Dolphins on Christmas. You're rooting for this. You're rooting for overtime. We can tell. Brown is 110 yards. Dolphins loaded up with a different formation. Lemon is hauled down. What a good job to stay steady by Brian Thomas. Some thought he was a bust. He's played so well this year, the Jets gave him a contract extension. There's, a, play there. there's a guy that had six and a half sacks over the previous four years. And he had seven and a half coming in. Does a nice job of getting up in the air, but not leaving his feet to the point where he can't control himself. Look at the wingspan. There's no way you're going to get it around him. Their first round pick in 0-2 who has been turned around in part because he's been a good fit in the 3-4 defense. And now third down. Been an issue all night for Miami. They're in field goal range to tie the game. So they can't make a big mistake here. Lemon screen. Sammy Morris. Kept going. Sammy pulling his way. And let's see the mark. He's going to be down at the seven. Looks to be just shy of the first down. Fourth and one it looks like. Mark coming at the seven. I would need it to get to the six. Request a measurement. That's the first thing you do. I'd still ask for the measurement if I'm Nick Saban. Jerry Austin held its hands up real wide, and the play clock is running. Mari is going to come on for a game tying field goal potentially. This is not necessarily a lock. Mari has missed 10 field goals this year. I think he's 20 of 30. Yeah, but five of them have come over 50 yards. I'm just, I'm just saying he's missed a lot of field goals. It's close in. Very just, close in. I'm just saying I'm qualified. Dolphins get the timeout. Play clock down to one. Dolphins get the timeout. Their indecision on what to do there on the fourth down made the play clock run down. So Miami, he, yeah, Nick wanted the reset, but the referee says, hey, the ball was down. You wanted a measurement. I said, this is how far your way you are. Well, here's the deal again. Jets victory here and a victory next week at home against the worst team in the AFC, the Raiders, and the Jets are in the playoffs. If they lose, they're still alive, but then help has to come in. The Jets would need Cincinnati to lose to Pittsburgh and Jacksonville to lose to Tennant to Kansas City. Or they'd need Cincinnati to lose and Tennessee to beat New England. Or they would need Denver to lose to San Francisco and Jacksonville to lose at Kansas City. So a lot of scenarios, and some of them are very tough, but Chad Pennington's team still has it in their hands if they win tonight. That's fairly complicated, but not as complicated as Joe's notion before, where you said that he got up in the air but didn't leave his feet. That seems a physical impossibility. Not very much. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't necessarily. He left his feet, but so you had him uh, in the air, but didn't way. leave his feet. Not quite. Okay. It's the old not quite. <laughs> Mare from 25, and the Jets are going to take a timeout here. Uh, this is interesting. They're not icing anybody. Can't ice anybody in Florida. Yeah, and, and it's an interesting timeout because you want to keep your timeout. You're going to get the yeah, ball back with yeah. an opportunity to go down the field here and set up a field goal drive of your own. Hmm. Interesting. The reason why we might be in a situation where we'll have a tie game is because of a great shoestring tackle by Zach Thomas. Pennington getting close. Thomas is in coverage on Cotterie. And just literally... This is an ankle tackle that keeps him short of a first down in the goal line, and it forced the Jets to kick the field goal, which blows holes in Tony's four-touchdown quarter. I was close, though. Come on now. I was close. Well, there's two. 
too, but if they'd gotten that first down just before, I know. it would have been three. If I was 6'6", six, six, I'd be in the NBA. So. Hey, guys, word from the sideline that there was more confusion on the Jets' side there as opposed to a strategic timeout, and they are upset as a coaching staff that they had to burn it. From 25, Mare ties the game at 10. So Cleo Lemon takes Miami down the field. They benefit from... The punt hitting the Jet player in the leg. Miami retains possession, gets the 25-yarder. 10-10, 209 to go, and the Jets have two timeouts. If you're Chad Pennington, you want to work the middle of the football field. Don't throw the ball to the perimeters. Get the ball in the hands of Leon Washington and work the middle of the football field to Jericho Cotchery with Lavernius Coles making a play hither and two. Does he have the kind of arm that in a two-minute circumstance can get down the field? Yes. So you Absolutely. don't worry about that at all. Absolutely. Okay. Well, as we get set for the big finish here, the big finish of the college football season, bowl week, it'll culminate over on ABC with the granddaddy of them all. The Rose Bowl game presented by City. John David Booty leads USC. Mike Hart, Chad Henney, and Michigan. Trojans and Wolverines in that great setting in Pasadena. Coverage begins 4.30 Eastern one week from today on ABC. Michael, you sound a little bit like Keith Jackson when you say the granddaddy of them all. You have to. You I mean, are you are required in the sportscasters union to say granddaddy and the way Keith The does. way the granddaddy said it. As long it, as yeah. you don't say fumble that way, <laughs> I think we're safe. Nobody better than Keith. That's everybody's favorite call. Fumble Huskers. <laughs> Mare to kick. Remember Justin Miller, the Jets kickoff return man, is the Pro Bowl kick returner. He has two for touchdown, but Mare nullifies that with his big leg. Touchback jet ball at the 20. Well, Lindo's just killed him. He just kicked him way out of the end zone. You guys talk about Chad Pennington, his ability to bring the team back. There's a, his game-winning drive story, seven in the career, one here this season. I love the situation like this. The reason why is because as a quarterback, you're basically in control of what happens now. They run a no huddle, so this is a very, very comfortable part of their offense. They can get the ball out in time. They've got timeouts. They have over two minutes. The two-minute warning will give them another timeout. The thing that they have to be careful of is not throwing the ball outside. You have plenty of time to work the middle of the football field and try and get in the hands of, of Leon Washington. He's done a terrific job making people How miss. important is the fact that Pennington is so smart in this kind of circumstance? Because it's said of the Jets, they can't even line up without him because he controls so much of it. How important is smart? Or is it not important? I think his intelligence is always important because it gives you a lot to choose from. But in this situation, his effectiveness to throw the football is more important. So this Jets season that started with Pennington leading them on a 59-yard game-winning drive at Tennessee comes to week 16, game 15, with a chance for Chad to do it again. First down, dump down, Washington. Good move around Skinita. And another good move. And Leon Washington breaks in the clear. There's a safety back there. Washington reading blocks. Leon Washington all the way to the 16. A 64-yard screen pass. The little guy can make people miss. Did, did he work the middle of the field for you enough on that one? <laughs> the first move around Scanina. Fakes wow. out Zach Thomas. We get to the two-minute warning. The Jets in the red zone. In field goal range. In a game they want desperately. What's your resolution? Saving more money? During Nissan's national year-end sales event, get savings of $3,200 on the 2006 Nissan Altima. Plus, get up to $1,000 bonus cash on select Nissans on top of all other incentives. At zero price, successful investing is about balancing risk and reward intelligently. For each one five and 10 year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat their Lipper average, finding the right opportunity. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. What's your resolution? Saving more money? During Nissan's national year-end sales event, get 2750 Nissan cash back or 1% financing on the Titan King Cab. Plus, get up to $1,000 bonus cash on select Nissans on top of all other incentives. 
On game day, what's inside will change this place. Colors will be newer, things will be clearer, real will be realer. Realer. When the big man play, you'll see it all again for the very first time. Look. Whoa. It's amazing. It's the mirrors. HDTV powered by DLP. See how millions of tiny mirrors make the picture amazing. Save up to $300 on select HDTVs powered by DLP today at Best Buy. Get autographed NFL stuff and give back. Bid for a cause. NFLauction.NFL.com Our aerial coverage on this Christmas night from Miami brought to you by Goodyear. The Dolphins have one timeout. The Jets have two. The game is tied at 10. The play by Washington was the second longest pass play of the year for the Jets. They had a 71 yard in a contrary in week two. It's the second longest pass play that Miami's given up this year. And now Mangini's team is in position for a 34 yard field goal now. And Miami is going to have a tough time getting the ball back. To call it a pass play is generous. He threw the ball about three yards in the air. The runner did all of it on his own and put him in a position on just one play to not have, have, have overtime to win this game. Joe, you would never pass here, would you? Wouldn't, wouldn't not be the first one. No, not the first one. Make them use their timeout up. Kevin Barlow is in the backfield with B.J. Askew as the fullback. Here is Barlow, left side, going to the 13-yard line. Jason Taylor signaling for Miami's final timeout, and it comes with 1.46 to go. Yep. I mean, Chad Pennington has not thrown the ball down the field very far. He doesn't throw the ball. I mean, through this year, it's been 70-some percent under 10 yards. 14 for 29. There's the 17 passes. One attempt over 20, over 10 yards. And two for two over 74. Now, in defense, that ball wasn't thrown that distance. Three yards. It was a three-yard pass. Right. And, and the big thing about it is... He got it in the hands of a little guy that can make a play, and he's made it all night. On the last drive, Leon Washington was the one that got him in position on a key third down. Now on this one, did a terrific job of running down the field, making a lot of guys miss again. Now they have no timeouts. Would you pass here? No. You would run again, right? Absolutely. Second and eight from the 14-yard line. Pennington adjusts the play. Two receivers, one tight end. What a play by Zach Thomas. The submarine lost at three. Powerless to stop the clock as it tumbles down here. Doesn't matter. I'd run it again. By the time the player gets marked down, the clock runs about five, six more seconds. So it's going to be down under a minute when they get to fourth down. And then the only dicey thing to worry about is whether or not the holder's going the to hold holder on the can ball. hold it. Right. Yeah, but that you count on it. I mean, you count on a guy we, making a play. He'd be one for two tonight, then. But he has the gloves. Be two this snap will come at about 58 seconds. And the Jets can run it all the way down and put it in on the foot of the second-year kicker, Nugent. From here, the field goal will be right about 35 yards. Pottery in motion back the other way. Barlow will run it to the 13-yard line, and uh, the Jets can run it down to about 16 seconds or so if they want to take the timeout before the kick for Mike Nugent. We'll see what happens here. So Nugent, who started this year with a very tough game against Tennessee, he missed two of his three field goals, and he did not have a good year last year, and people were questioning, could Nugent be the kicker that was worth taking a second-round pick? Mangini out there will uh, use with Pennington the chance to take a timeout with about 14 left. Now Chad Pennington, he just, he's so complete. You stand next to the referee, you tell him when you want the timeout, and that's what you do. This is the play on the screen that set this whole thing up. Leon Washington does a job of blocking, and then he's gone, 70 yards up the field. He has your requisite height, Joe. He's little, 5'8". He gets lost in this, right? Does a wonderful job maneuvering, using his blockers, getting down the field, almost takes it into the end zone. 
continuing the football conversation here is Pennington but he may not have to run another snap so let's go back to the Nugent story here guys for a second I saw this kid kick at Ohio State and was a fabulous kicker kicked a 55 yard game winning field goal a game we had in Columbus a couple of years ago he's from Centerville Ohio it's the same hometown as his center Nick Mangle same hometown as AJ Hawk the Green Bay linebacker same hometown as our colleague Kirk Herbstreet yep. from a football factory they love Nugent at Ohio State but they got to the Jets and the adjustment of the different kind of footballs he had to kick he did not like and it really was an adjustment period for him got much more familiar with it this year and after going one of three in that Tennessee game he's now kicked 19 of the last 20 successfully he's developed into a guy worthy of the second round pick and now here's his opportunity to put his name in Jets Dolphins history but he's only seven for nine between 30 and 39 yards the holder is the puncher Ben Graham who twice in the last two weeks including the first half didn't handle a snap well James Durth is the deep snapper officially this is a 30 yard kick for the lead and for the Jets to be in great playoff position snap good hold good and the kick is good as well and Mike Nugent Puts the Jets on top by three. You saw that reaction shot from Chad Pennington. And for all the amount of time that we have defamed him tonight, Joe, for all the amount of time we've said he hasn't had a good arm or a great arm or a decent arm, he put his team, when he had to, in position to win the game, and they're up now. The game stayed in the manageable state for Chad and the Jet offense. That was the key. And as you see the Christmas night glee on the sideline for the Jets, the piece of coal was delivered in the stockings of the Bengals, the Titans, the Jaguars, and the Chiefs. All those teams who were hoping for a Jets loss to bring everybody back. But the kick by Nugent puts the Jets in position. If they hold on for these final 10 seconds, they beat the Raiders, and they're in the playoffs. Nick Saban will have his first losing season as a head coach in a dozen years. And everybody else in the AFC is going to be hoping against hope that the Jets lose to the Raiders on Sunday. We saw Mangini a second ago, 35 years old, doing something that people said was next to impossible this year. They had a terrible record last year. They didn't know if Pennington would be back. They give him one of the great nicknames in New York, Mangenius, and he lives up to it. And all the players say he's particularly meticulous. He scouts everything. He teaches everything. He's done great. And Chad Pennington certainly has to be a guy that you have to consider as the comeback player oh, of the year. Oh, sure. I mean, I mean, just like well, you Well, Drew Brees as well. As Carson Palmer. But yeah. To me, Chad Pennington, what he has been able to do, the way he runs this, he deserves an awful lot of credit. We've seen him have trouble with some throws tonight. Well, we were killing him. There are though. certain throws that he struggles with and can't make. Like I said, you go back to Michael Lehan. Let's see if the Jets squib it or kick it deep. They have a very, very good coverage team, one of the best in the league. They choose to kick it deep in cover. Welker from the goal line fakes the reverse. Star starts the throwback process. The ball in the hands of Miner, who put it on the ground. Chambers picks it up. He's brought down. The clock's at double zero. And the Jets come to Miami, beat the Dolphins. And if they beat the Raiders on Sunday, the Jets are in the playoffs. First smile of the night we saw from Mangini. If you are a Jets fan, Merry Christmas. The guy who drove Nick Saban from the Cleveland Browns to his job interview at Michigan State. Drove him to the plane for his job interview. They knew each other from the Cleveland days. And he beats him on Christmas night on Monday Night Football to get the Jets to the edge of the cup. Guys, it's been a wonderful year. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Michael. You. Merry Christmas to everybody. And Susie and Michelle had their wishes and our wishes to them as well. The 37th season of Monday Night Football in the books. We have Sports Center coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Susie Coffey. Michelle Tafoya, Joe Theismann, Tony Kornheiser, and all the women and men on our team. Mike Tirico saying thank you, and let's leave you with the moments to remind you that three of the most special words in football are Monday Night Football. In spite of the floodwaters of Katrina, in spite of neighborhoods that were shattered, tonight we are one. And after 13 months, New Orleans together again. Yeah, go ahead. 20 ain't gonna be.
be enough to win this game. Devin Hester from the 18. Hester into the open field. Devin Hester all the way. Touchdown, Chicago Bears. It's just incredible. The 26-year-old Romo replaces the 34-year-old Bledsoe. And let's listen to the fans react as Romo comes out as the Cowboys quarterback. To the end zone. Cowboy touchdown. How cool is this? A snowy night in Seattle. Is there a better setting in the world of football than a snowy field with Brett Favre as a quarterback? Peyton Manning, face of the NFL. And who does Carson Palmer say without question is the best quarterback in the NFL? Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. And he continues to prove it. If you say Yo Tony to me, I'd feel good about that. Yo Tony. You gotta love that. <laughs> Go for it. This time I have somebody who's actually voted the world's sexiest man. And he's actually sex. Feel good about that. Right. <laughs> There's something special about Monday night, isn't it? Yo, Monday night yeah. football is just something else. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League.